Number 10. Being a non-human cube? Christopher Hargreaves is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters in season 3 of the Umbrella Academy streaming series on Netflix. Like most of the rest of the characters and plot in this series, Christopher is a character inspired by their own comic book counterpart. In the comics, Christopher is still a non-human cube who is part of the Sparrows team. In the comics, they are a secret team that exists at the same time as the Umbrella Academy, working in secret to save the world. Being brought together by Reginald Hargreaves, but managed by Grace, who the Umbrella Academy, even in season 3 of the show, still refer to as mom. Christopher in the show appears to have fear inducing powers and can also affect the temperature of the air around him, dropping it down to freezing. You wouldn't think a floating cube would be powerful, but of course, Umbrella Academy makes this amazing weirdness possible. Number 9. Rainbow Girl She is the first super powered individual on this list affiliated with the Legion of Superheroes, but she definitely won't be the last. The team seems to be just a sticky flytrap for all the random and wacky superheroes out there in the universe. Unlike some others though, Rainbow Girl didn't actually make it onto that team as her powers were deemed not useful enough. Instead, she made it onto the Legion of Substitute Heroes, which I'm assuming is the Legion that villains either don't listen to or the Legion that just puts on a movie for villains to watch instead of just teaching them. I mean, biting them. Anyways, why is Rainbow Girl useless? Well, she can harness the emotional spectrum. Red for rage, orange for green, yellow for fear, green for will, blue for hope, indigo for compassion, and violet for love. But unlike the lanterns, she has no ring to use the power through, and she cycles through the colors impulsively, meaning it leads to terrible mood swings. Number 8. Street Existence? I don't even know what to call this power set. Really, it, it kind of just has to do with what Danny is. They're unique. I guess, physiology. Danny is a street, often known as Danny the Street, and sometimes when Danny has been hurt, Danny the Brick. Danny is a street that appears to those who most need a refuge in the world, the outcasts of society, if you will. Danny provides a safe haven for these people so that they can truly be themselves, living without prejudice or judgment. Being a street is weirdly powerful, and Danny can actually control what is on the street and its decor. Danny can also teleport to anywhere around the world to protect their citizens, which is also kind of weirdly OP for those who both live on the street and of course for Danny themselves. Number 7. Matter Eater Lad Honestly, Tenzel Kem's power, one shared by his whole race, gives me more questions than it gives me answers. Matter Eater Lad's main shtick is that he can eat any substance of matter in any form, solid, liquid, or gas, in any amount at super speed. Bismolians, which are his race, come from a planet where over time microbes made regular regular food inedible. In turn, their species evolved to be able to eat any form of matter thanks to producing a variety of digestive enzymes that act on specific substances, making them easier to chew and digest. Bismolians can also metabolize food almost instantly, and if they gotta, they can consume tons of food in minutes. So where I am left confused is exactly where all that stuff goes. Not to get like too into it here, but what's Tenzel's bathroom situation like? Also dental. I'm a Assuming their teeth are of a denser material than human teeth. One Bismolian who was part of the Yellow Lanterns ate people, which caused him to get his teeth removed as punishment. But he then had those replaced with Bismolian steel, allowing him to bite through almost anything. So my question is, could he not bite through anything before? Also, if Tenzel eats a whole asteroid, which he has done before, where does he poop? I just have so many questions and like no answers. I would just one, just one answer. Number six, polka dot suit. You wouldn't think a polka dot suit would be so powerful. And yet, whether we are talking Polka Dot Man's suit in the comics or in the DCEU film, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, either way, he's pretty OP. In the comics, Polka Dot Man's suit is tech, where he can basically use the polka dots on his suit to turn them into any kind of weapon that he wants or a getaway device. All the dots kind of do different things. Pretty wild, but also pretty weird. The major flaw being that, of course, the suit can break down. Well, in the comics, Polka Dot Man is a villain in the DCEU, he's more an anti-hero, a forcibly reformed criminal who joins the Suicide Squad and ends up saving the world from Starro the Conqueror. Here, Polka Dot Man's polka dots are actually more intrinsic to him, kind of like 
really his own power, and they appear on his skin. When he purges them, they can be used as weapons to take down enemies, acting like destructive projectiles. But also, he does kind of need to purge them, so there is that. Here, his polka dot generation is explained as being the result of an interdimensional virus that basically Abner received after his awful mother experimented on him and his siblings. Also, I hope there's more Suicide Squad movies, and I hope we get to see more of his siblings, and they're all like just the same actor, but like different people that have weird powers. That'd be awesome. Number five, the Hulk. Everyone knows Hulk's ability to turn into a big old green monster and rip things apart with a strength that increases based on his anger. But what many of you may not know is that Hulk actually possesses a much more subtle ability to see astral projections and ghosts and even interact with them if he chooses. Hulk's astral form perception has come in handy when working with Doctor Strange as a defender. But why does Hulk have this ability? Well, Bruce Banner subconsciously feared his father's ghost would come back to haunt him. Like, literally come back to haunt him. And so the Hulk just developed this mechanism to allow him to look out for that ghost. And I guess other ghosts as well. There isn't really more to it. Hulk just developed the ability that is something usually reserved for telepaths. For the super intelligent Bruce Banner, it would make a bit more sense, but it's been suggested that for Bruce, the clarity of the astral forms is diminished when compared to the telepathically resistant Hulk's ability to view them. With a mortal Hulk and the connection to the one below all, perhaps that could serve as some kind of fan explanation but we don't have a real one, so. Uh. Number four, Battle Precognition. Midnighter is another superhero who has unique powers that many simply don't really seem to think of. But when you do, you realize just how powerful he is. Midnighter basically has a chip in his head that allows him to parse out all the possible outcomes when in the midst of a fight. He basically run through hundreds of possibilities when it comes to his opponent's next move in a manner of seconds, meaning that he almost always knows which move to make himself to best counter whomever he's fighting. In essence, since he has precognitive programming, which allows him to see into the future and kind of better plan what moves to make in the moment in order to win against, well, almost any opponent, really. Number three, Superman. Back in the day, while Superman was a fairly new being, he would kind of have whatever superpower he wanted slash needed at the time, until eventually his set table of powers was established. But there is one new power that appeared in 1958, Superman number 125, where Superman learned to fire a tiny version of himself out of his hands. After discovering a tiny spaceship that blows up in his face, Superman loses all of his abilities minus, interestingly, his invulnerability. Luckily, he gained the ability to literally fire a doll-sized version of himself out of his hand that had all of his powers and would go and beat up criminals or melt icebergs. What's hilarious is that Superman even got jealous of the little mini him. When a guided missile was on its way to the Eiffel Tower, he sent out his little buddy and an onlooker shouted, how cute, to which he said, Cute? What nonsense! Fortunately for Superman, his mini-me was destroyed by a kryptonite meteorite and Superman's powers were restored to him. At number two, we have Dog Welder. Now, aside from this guy having one of the worst superpowers of all time, I also just think he's one of the worst superheroes based on who he is as a person. If you're a dog person, skip ahead to the next section because basically, this bozo goes around and kills dogs that he finds in alleyways and then calls it a superpower to weld them to people's faces, and he's still considered a good guy. Now, I don't really understand the joke here, but if it is a joke, it's so over the top and weird that I don't even get it. I feel like DC was trying to come up with a meme character here for a laugh, but I just, I don't like the part where he's just killing dogs, nor do I even get it at all. Dog Welder is a big thumbs down in my books, and I think he rightfully deserved a spot high on this list. Shame on you, Dog Welder. Number one, six pack. Six Pack is the leader of Section 8, the same team Dog Welder is on, both the first and the second Dog Welder. His powers, or abilities rather, involve him having a high tolerance for drinking. And it's been implied at one point that he may, and I'd like to emphasize the word may, have reality warping powers. But if he does, he doesn't really know how to use them. This was something that the many angled ones sensed in him when they faced off against him and he was apparently able to create a force field, but he didn't know how he'd done it. Six Pack is also known as Sydney Speck. He is generally known for being intoxicated, hence his name, which is in reference to drinks. And in fact, being completely sober can work against him. While sober, Six Pack is forced to face the harsh reality of his life, which can make him question what he is doing and why. I mean, considering his power set and his general focus, that makes sense. Fair enough. Number 10, Exceptional. 
Bailey Hoskins is known for being the worst X-Men ever, probably because his powers are pretty lackluster sounding, but manage to pack a pretty big bang when they do get used. Bailey's powers involve self detonation, but the only thing is that activating his powers will actually also result in his death, meaning he can only use them once and doing so will kill him. However, he does end up doing this and in doing so saves the world, or at least a world. His good friend and teammate Miranda has reality warping powers that are extremely powerful, propelling her into her own classification of mutant even, in terms of power level. But even then, this time around, it seems Miranda can't seem to interfere in this world at this time. It seems she needs some help from Bailey, and in sacrificing himself, he not only saves the world, but also seemingly helps Miranda to fix it and set it right again or potentially erase it. That's kind of what it looks like happens at the end. But maybe that's how you fix it. Just wipe it. Number 9. Funny Man Funny Man is an odd superhero who is historically actually pretty significant, despite how weird he may seem. He's not just powerful for how much of a goofball he is, he is powerful in a historical context, which I think means he deserves this spot. Also, I'm not sure if we've ever mentioned him on the channel, as far as I can recall, I haven't at the very least. Funny Man was a creation of Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, after they both left DC and began what would become an epic and longtime legal dispute over the rights to Superman, not feeling they were being fairly paid their dues. And for those who don't know, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster are the ones that created Superman. Siegel especially was passionate about getting the rights to their character back. After leaving DC, they reconnected with former DC editor Vin Sullivan, who had started up his own comic book company, Magazine Enterprises. Jerry and Joe tried to create the magic of Superman again, but this time by teaming up to make something entirely different and new, Funny Man. Celebrating their love of comic book pranks and humor, Funny Man was comedian Larry Davis, who after a publicity stunt gone wrong, ends up actually catching a real life criminal, and decides to become a bona fide superhero, using his jokes and funny pranks to apprehend and stop criminals. A wacky idea that sadly did not end up panning out in the end for Jerry and Joe, as the character only lasted 6 issues. Funny Man didn't have any powers, but he was miraculously and comically good at stopping villains with his antics, and sometimes even doing this completely by accident. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to show your love for our channel on perhaps another platform, you can head on over to Facebook, click that like, it really does help us out here at the channel, and thanks if you've already done it. Number 8. Dead Girl I think one of the weirdest things about Dead Girl is that her whole thing is immortality, as she's already dead and basically can't die, with her mutant powers activating only after her death. And yet she did die in the comics, possibly due to a disease which ultimately caused her to fall apart from decomposition. That is the one thing she's meant to be good at, not dying, and yet it happened. Because she's technically already dead. Fortunately that didn't stop Dead Girl from going on adventures, and she currently still is dead doing so, even despite dying. Joining the newly reformed Static X as they battle against Zeitgeist Team Excellent. Dead Girl's power allows her to reanimate herself, parts of herself, and to communicate with ghosts and even temporarily resurrect the dead. Number 7. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur make for a great pair, especially as Moon Girl's power set allows her to swap her consciousness with Devil Dinosaur's consciousness. An oddly specific but super powerful ability. Moon Girl aka Lunella Lafayette actually has inhuman lineage and gained her abilities after undergoing terrogenesis. Aside from that, she is also a super genius and despite her young age is likely one of the most brilliant and gifted minds that we have in the Marvel Universe. Also when we're talking about weird power sets and weird heroes who are also super powerful, Moon Girl really fits the bill, as even outside of being a superhero, she's identified as a kind of oddball her entire life. In fact, she was super nervous about undergoing terogenesis because of this. Although she has embraced her weirdness, she was worried that this would just be another thing that would make her stand out more and turn her into even more of a freak than she already was. Aw, Lunella. I identify a lot with Moon Girl. I feel like she's such a cool and underrated character. Number 6. Elasti Woman Elasti Woman. Ugh, I love Rita Farr. She is one of the members of DC's Doom Patrol. In the show Doom Patrol, Rita might struggle to utilize and control her powers, still afraid of them and of her appearance while using them, as well as becoming, you know, permanently stuck in her kind of creepy elastic form that she has in the show. But in the comics, Elasti Woman has learned to master her abilities. Rita gained her powers while she, as a 
Hollywood actress was working on a set in Africa. She was exposed to volcanic gas which allowed her to change the size of her body and limbs at will, also having the ability to stretch her limbs. John Byrne's interpretation of the character was also able to alter the size of objects just by touching them. And the current Prime Earth continuity version of her also has shape-shifting abilities. I also feel like DC's Doom Patrol series does a great job of capturing what like shape-shifting or stretching powers would be like in real life, and kind of the whole horror and body dysmorphia aspects of them. Possibly it's one of the best live action interpretations of this kind of power set I have ever seen. Also, if you aren't watching DC's Doom Patrol, what are you doing with your life? Go watch it. It's so good. Number five, Multiple Man. Multiple Man has a strange and yet awesome power. He can create duplicates, often referred to as dupes for short, of himself, and use them to do and learn all sorts of things. Why learn? Well, because when he absorbs these duplicates back into himself, he also gains all their memories and knowledge. As long as he gets to absorb them back, that is. We've seen a lot of weird stories with Multiple Man because of this part of his unique power set, including one where he had a baby with his girlfriend Siren, but because he had actually sent a dupe to sleep with her on the night the child was conceived, when he first went to hold their newborn child because it was actually a product of a dupe, it got absorbed back into him. Lots of weird things about that. Well, that whole scenario. And then there was the time that he secretly sent a dupe posing as him, I mean technically they're all him, but you know, they're not the real him, to hang out with Layla and their son together, Davy, when Davy took his first steps. This dupe tragically died during an attack on Madrox's lab in X Corp, so he wasn't able to actually absorb him back, and therefore lost those memories forever. Ooh, sad, weird. Kinda awful, Jamie. I love when people are always like, man, Jamie, why are you always sending dupes to hang out with me? And Jamie's response is just like, I mean, technically the dupes are me, so like, you're just hanging out with me. Number four, Crazy Jane. Crazy Jane is a member of the Doom Patrol, and honestly, that is a great team to look at if you wanna find some superheroes who are actually quite powerful, but also just wonderfully weird. Jane is no exception to that rule. She's kind of like Marvel's Legion, who appeared only a few years before she made her debut over at DC Comics, first appearing in Doom Patrol issue 19 of the 1987 series, created by comic book writing legend Grant Morrison and masterful artist Richard Cage. Crazy Jane is Kay Chalice, who within her has at least 64 personalities, each with their own personas and their own power sets. While this means she has a lot of power at her fingertips, the challenging thing is that Jane often struggles to find balance with the various personalities residing within her, and has demonstrated various levels of control over them. And they over her. Number three, Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl is also one of the most ridiculous heroes when it comes to her premise and her power set. Although really what makes Squirrel Girl aka Doreen Green so strong of a hero, so powerful of a hero, and of a character, is her likability and her approach to heroism. She has a tendency to beat villains by befriending them and persuading them to stop their devilish and deadly plots. Although she has also summoned an army of squirrels in the past to help her take down even some of the most famous and notorious villains, like early on in her career when she handily and embarrassingly defeated Doctor Doom. Squirrel Girl has also faced off and defeated the likes of Thanos and Galactus as well. I love Doreen Green. I want to be Doreen Green. She's so great. Number two, Beak. Not all mutants get to be as badass as Iceman or Cable. Case in point, Beak. Although Beak as a character is admittedly pretty cool and pretty brave, his mutant power is more a physical mutation, which means that he is evidently not considered a favorite for many X-Men fans out there. Like Skin, who was on part one of this list, Beak's powers, if you can call them that, leave him resembling a bird, and he's basically built like one, but initially in the comics he couldn't even really fly. Struggled a lot with that. Beak has since figured out kinda how to fly, or rather like glide somewhat, but even still he can really only go short distances and it takes a lot of work. And even going short distances, he doesn't really have a ton of like tactical flying skills to speak of either. Fortunately, Beak is still a really likable person and character, so he doesn't often need to rely on his mutant powers to be of use. Number one, the Detachable Kid, or TDK. The Detachable Kid sounds like a pretty lame hero, and well, he is. He also isn't exactly a bona fide hero as he's a member of the Suicide Squad, but seeing as how this is a team primarily made up of, you know, reformed criminals and villains, well I mean villains at least who are forced into being good to get time lifted off their sentence, I think we can still count him. I think I'm gonna count him, so if you have a problem with it, 
you can, we'll talk in the comments. TDK is played by Nathan Fillion in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and was created just for the movie and the DCEU. But the character does take inspiration from someone else on part one of this list, Arm Fall Off Boy, and his other post zero hour comic book alternate, Splitter, who's also another version of that character. At least TDK has a somewhat cooler name, but unlike Arm Fall Off Boy, his prowess is a little less admirable. When it's time for him to fight, he detaches his arms and uses them to attack. Now, the other cool thing I gotta say is TDK can actually control his arms, like using his mind, which is kinda cool, but that plan is still pretty terrible and he's pretty quickly defeated by being shot a whole bunch, both in his detached arms, which he seems to, you know, still be able to feel, and directly in his body where he gets shot up a bunch, so he's instantly gone. Also, sorry, that's a spoiler, but also that movie's old now, so should have watched it. Number 10, Dazzler. I am really loath to put Dazzler on this list at all. Just feels bad. If you've been watching Top 10 Nerd for a while, then you likely know I am a big Allison Blair fan. I became one after I read through some of her original series and I fell in love with Allison and I also fell in love with her power set. I actually really like it. However, as I've said before, having some of the worst powers doesn't mean that you're a bad character. It doesn't even mean that your powers are really all that bad. After all, it's kind of just in how you use them. But Allison, as Daz, typically prefers to use her powers to add light effects to her shows as a performer. She's been a superhero before, yes, and we've seen her do some pretty crazy things with her powers, yes, but it's not the life that she likes to live. She would actually rather downplay her abilities somewhat in terms of heroics, and then just use them to make pretty light shows in addition to her masterful singing abilities for people to enjoy. Which, you know, makes them, I guess, the worst in terms of like superhero stuff. At number nine, we have Matter Eater Lad. This guy has a pretty rough set of powers, which allow him to metabolize just about anything he swallows. That's right, the enzymes in his stomach are so strong that he can break down and digest anything, no matter how large. Even if they're radioactive and or otherwise damaging. Now, although he is a pretty silly superhero, Matter Eater Lad isn't at the number one spot because I can in some sense see how this power might be of use in the right situation. For example, let's say you have to get rid of a bomb that's about to explode. The chances are that this guy will be able to eat that problem away. Or if you need to get rid of a parasite that's threatening to take over the world, he could simply gobble it up so it can't repopulate. So yes, on paper, a hero with superpowered stomach enzymes sounds like a total joke, but I would only say he's mostly a joke. Number eight, Bouncing Boy. Bouncing Boy is a member of the Legion of Superheroes. While other names have been suggested for Charles Tane, Bouncing Boy is the one that is stuck. And when I explain his powers, you're gonna see why we went with Bouncing Boy here. Charles apparently gained his powers after drinking an experimental super plastic formula. I feel like that would kill you, really. As a result, he became extremely, well, bouncy. He can inflate into a perfectly round ball and initially would use himself as a sort of like wrecking ball, if you will, honing and mastering his ability to direct himself as he bounced around. Later on, he would also become somewhat kind of like elastic in regards to his physiology, making him more bouncy. Initially, he was someone who tried out for the Legion of Superheroes multiple times and was rejected due to his powers being even too ridiculous for the team to consider. But the Prime Earth slash Rebirth version of the character has successfully become a member of that team, so yay. At number seven is Skin. This guy just creeps me out. I've covered him before. Mainly because of how gross his powers are, as well as his name, but also because of how depressing and off-putting he looks in every panel that he appears in. Angelo Espinoza, aka Skin, has access to about six feet of extra skin that he can use to stretch around his enemies or use as a rope to swing around with. He's basically like Reed Richards, except his bones and muscles don't stretch along with his skin, and also Mr. Fantastic's limit doesn't stop at six feet. Skin is just a very unfortunate hero who might wish that he'd never gotten superpowers to begin with. Number six, Peeper. Peeper is one of my favorite mutants, but sadly that does not save him like others before him, who I also love from making this list. Sorry, Peeper. After all, this is part three, and I already had some heroes that I loved in part two, so what can I say? I guess I tend to love heroes whose powers actually seem less than super, so this is, these are great lists for me. It's part of what I love about those characters, to be honest. Peeper is a mutant who, honestly, all the other mutant all-stars that he's interacted with recently have been super sweet to, and I, I love that. I'm here for that. Peeper's powers have to do with his physical mutation, which is that he has enlarged eyes. <laughs> with his eyes, he can see things 
that others can't, possessing different forms of sight. Currently, Peeper uses his powers to help out his fellow teammates as a member of Swords the Six, although he's not really like part of the main six because they're teleporters. He's not a teleporter, but he works with Sword and the Six to help expand the areas of mutant technology. At number five is Arm Fall Off Boy. This guy is pretty clearly a gag character, but he's technically part of the official DC universe, so he's fair game for the list. Arm Fall Off Boy, worst name, has the incredible ability to detach his limbs and use them as melee weapons. As gross and as weird as this power is, it seems like he at least believes in himself, which is something. In one panel, we see him proudly popping his left arm off with a big plorp sound, preparing onlookers to be, quote, astounded by his power. He obviously doesn't have a huge backstory, so it's hard to expound too much on him, but he definitely makes history for being one of the worst heroes, if nothing else. Number four, Tag. Tag is definitely one of the weirdest superheroes out there when it comes to his abilities. He is Brian Cruz, a mutant whose powers allow him to tag someone psionically, inciting a telepathic urge in other people to either run away or run toward the person he's tagged. The person who's it? He could use his powers to take multiple people, but if making them emit a psionic signal that encouraged others to run away from them, the range would actually top out at about 100 meters away. Then the urge for people to run would stop. So it's really weirdly specific. At number three, we have the people of New York City. Yes. Even though it's hard to imagine calling them superheroes, at one point, the people of NYC are endowed with a very subtle power given to them by Reed Richards. And the power is to be able to tell which direction is north at all times. This is a response to the Spider Island evil plan set by Jackal, where he unleashes an army of little bugs that give people Spider-Man's powers. So to put everyone back on even keel, Richards decides that everyone should be turned into superheroes. The only thing is that to keep things simple, the ability given to the population of the city is so lame that it has gone down as one of the worst superpowers of all time, and has forced the innocent people of New York City to appear on this rather embarrassing list. Number two, Dog Welder 2. Dog Welder was high up on our first part to this list, but did you know there isn't just one dog welder out there? I know, it's shocking considering that his power set in essence involves welding people to weld. I mean, you know, it's in his name. And it's pretty unspeakable if you ask me. How is this a hero at all? Never mind, how did we make a second version of him? Dog Welder 2 ends up being possessed by the welding equipment of the former dog welder and even ends up at one point welding his family. Unable to resist the compulsion to weld, he must weld. It's a curse. Despite all this, he's still considered a hero somehow. He also ends up joining along with the superhero team known as Section 8. Dog Welder 2 is even more ridiculous than the first in that he learns the true origins of his powers actually come from the Egyptian god Anubis, and also saves the world by welding two stars together, one of which is Sirius, also known as the Dog Star. Get it? At number one is the silliest, worst superhero of all, with respect. J. Pennington Pennypacker, aka the Almighty Dollar. Living most of his life as an average citizen working as an accountant, Pennypacker eventually attends the Run Amunk Self Esteem Camp, which turns out to be the most fateful decision he's ever made. After attending the camp for a time, we learn that it's all just a front for a mysterious scientist who's working on completing a device that could give anyone superpowers. And when J. Pennington Pennypacker is endowed with his own powers, he's given an ability that's perfectly suited for his ridiculous name. He is, from that moment onwards, endowed with the ability to shoot pennies out of his wrists at high velocities. Although he only appears in one issue of Marvel's NFL Super Pro back in 1992, the almighty dollar is technically an official part of the Marvel canon and must be treated as such. Coming in at number 10 is Iska the Unbeaten. This spot could as easily been taken by Domino, as Iska also has a form of limited tychokinesis, which is is probability manipulation, or also known as the power of luck, which is probably one of the most unexplainable powers because we can't even say that luck is for sure a real thing. But Iska takes it one step further into ridiculousness with the power of being literally unable to lose. Iska has the power to always win, no matter what, whether that is individual one on one contest votes or wagers, or larger battles where she is a member of a group. In contests of skill, her powers might give her the talent she needs to win, or she might just win through quote, 
improbable circumstances. In larger battles or wars, her powers detect the probability of both sides winning and have literally led her to defect from the losing side and join the winning side, meaning she still personally wins. It's not that we don't understand it, it's that it can't even properly be explained without sounding utterly ridiculous. Love Iska the Unbeaten though, great character. Number 9. Seeing really really well When it comes to iBoy, many of his powers are tied to him having multiple eyes. I believe in total he has 57 eyes that cover his body. A lot of people relegate iBoy to not being that powerful because, well, his mutation seems pretty ridiculous. But in reality, having multiple eyes is extremely powerful and actually has tons of benefits. Kind of like how Cypher was initially thought to have a pretty useless power set with his ability to communicate and understand all languages, until we learned just how universally that actually could apply. The same could be said for iBoy. Trevor not only has multiple eyes, but can use them to perceive things others can't. He has microscopic, night, infrared, telescopic, thermal, and even chemical vision. He can also read body language immensely well, allowing him to see into people's true feelings, emotions, and psychology. And aside from that, he can even see through falsehoods and illusions and see potential weaknesses in his opponents. Number 8. Legion David Haller was living in Paris with his mother when her home was invaded by a assassination team. They took out David's stepfather before his eyes which kicked off his latent psionic powers, which he used to incinerate the brains out of the assassins. However, as he did so, he made telepathic contact with each of his victims, thus experiencing their thoughts and emotions as they died, which as you can imagine deeply affected David, forcing him into a catatonic state. The consciousness of the leader of the assassins, Jamail Karami, was absorbed and merged into David's mind. The terrible trauma that David had suffered had splintered David's personality into multiple altars, with each of these altars controlling a different psionic power. Because of this, Legion is an omega level mutant able to create spontaneous mutations of different kinds that are accompanied by new personas or alter egos to govern each one of these new mutations. Now, David himself stated that he had in his mind 200 omega level split personalities, but the X Men Rogue stated that while she was in Inside Legion, she was connected to thousands of types of powers, and there were more, quote, being born all the time. How this works, I have absolutely no idea, but it does, and he is scary. Number seven, light transmutation. Dazzler to me is such an underrated hero. Her powers allow her to transmute sound into light, which on paper sounds pretty lame, until you realize just all the things she can actually use light to do, like make light lasers, just super cool. Although Dazzler, aka Allison Blair, prefers to use her powers to jazz up her concerts and musical performances with stunning light shows, although it's never really been explained if the sound is then muted thanks to her doing this or not, uh, I'm assuming not, because people still seem to be able to hear her sing and her band play music, Dazzler also has been called on every now and then to play the role of hero. Daz proved herself to be so so powerful throughout her own series, accomplishing things like facing the Hulk and not only surviving, but kind of beating him, and even being considered powerful enough to become a temporary Herald of Galactus. Number 6. The Flash Wally West is easily the fastest of all the speedsters out there. He has an almost spiritual connection to the speed force that allows him to do a great number of things, from traveling time to creating electrical energy constructs. Thanks to a heart condition, Wally has even been able to freeze time, which basically allows him to move at super speed without actually moving at super speed. And if you can explain exactly how that works to me, I will give you one single dollar. That's all I got. The speed force is basically time, the representation of reality in motion being the very cosmic force that pushes space and time forward. So how is it that people can hold chunks of it, or create lightning constructs with it, or absorb speed and momentum from other people or things? As a concept for time and a cosmic force, it is really hard to both wrap your head around it and explain the speed force and all the things that speedsters like Wally West and Barry Allen are able to do with it. You kind of just have to accept that. This is what it is. Number 5. Power of Music Going back to Dazzler, another power that seems to get overlooked with her and a few other folks is her singing ability. Although it's not specifically a superpower, there have been multiple times it's been kind of used as such. At one point, Dazzler participates in a singing competition with Enchantress, attempting to win Odin's favor. Although Enchantress is considered to be more beautiful than Dazzler, Allison still manages to beat her because she's just that good of a singer. And that's pretty impressive considering that like I Odin is the judge of this singing contest so 
Gotta impress Odin. And this is a competition where she's basically fighting for her life through song. There have been other such occasions in the comics where people have had to use the power of music to get themselves out of tough spots or to win favor. Music both in and outside of the comics is just a powerful thing. In the real world, even plants can be swayed by its influence and its power. The power of song. Number 4. Jin Genie Jin Genie was a mutant, but unlike almost any other mutant ever, her powers were directly dependent on how much alcohol she consumed. Becca Parker had the power to generate seismic vibrations proportionate to her amount of alcoholic intake. As you can imagine, being intoxicated in order to use your superpowers can be rather Mm, interesting. It seems like one of those things you should add to the list of things you shouldn't do while under the influence. Like don't drive, don't operate heavy machinery, don't use your superpowers to cause seismic vibrations. That kind of thing. Unfortunately, we do not get to see her use her powers that much or get an explanation for why alcohol fuels said powers because Jin Genie is de-lifed in the same comic that she was introduced in. X-Force number 116 in July 2001. Number 3. Elemental Control Elemental Control is a power that on paper sounds great, but what if you just have one element that you control? A lot of people feel like, well then it's not that great. There are a few different points here I'd like to make though on powers in regards to elements. Elements. There are those who people think are simply not as strong due to them being tied to you know one specific element, and then there are those who are simply underestimated due to the fact that people think they can only control one element or one aspect of the elements, when in fact they can actually control many of those things. Namely, here we are talking about Iceman and Storm. Iceman might not sound so powerful, I mean, back in the day he was kind of more of a snowman even than an Iceman, who mainly used his powers to create ice walls and ice slides, but Bobby has proven over the years as he's honed his powers that manipulation of water in any form is really powerful. He can not only manipulate ice, but also water at this point, and is almost immortal, as even when he's destroyed he can basically seemingly regenerate from just a single drop of water or like a piece of ice. He can also create ice golems, which may be sentient even. When it comes to Storm, you might just think of her as an elemental who can control, well, you know, storms, but she can actually do much more than that. We've also seen her control temperatures, heating things up and cooling them off. In fact, Storm is really a master of all elements, so don't let her mutant name fool you. Storm is like an all around powerful elemental and not someone you want to mess with. And she's a great fighter, so Storm is really, just don't mess with Storm. Don't make Storm mad, it's, it wouldn't be good. Number two, Kite Man. Kite Man. Hell yeah. Now real me this, nerds. What good are powers like reality warping, energy projection, telekinesis, and super strength against a guy who flies around on a giant kite? Yeah. I'd like to see the Justice League take on Charles Brown and his giant kite. There's no way anyone could possibly stand against that. No sir. Not at all. Kite Man possessed a variety of gimmicked kites, including a jet powered hang glider that allowed for quick escapes, a mammoth kite that the Kite Man used to shuttle criminals out of Gotham's prison, a flashbulb kite, and a trap net kite. Although in more recent times he did temporarily possess the powers of titans, those abilities pale in comparison to the might of a good kite at your side though. And in at number one is Ten Eyed Man. Okay, it's a DC writer's room. You and your buds are sitting around the table, you need a villain, but someone did Different, someone unique, someone who could pose a threat to the caped crusader. A villain that requires intelligence to beat, some could say. Then all of a sudden, Frank stands up. I've got it! We take away a man's ability to see, and instead, his vision will come from his fingertips. Five eyes on each hand. A brief moment of silence follows, as the genius that would become Philip Reardon, the ten-eyed man, has just been created. That is his only power, and as you can imagine, this does pose some problems. For starters, his regular their eyes are blind. Also, he is often easily defeated simply by injuring his very sensitive eye fingers, which can be done by tricking him into catching or touching something, or even theoretically giving him a high five. But let's not forget it has been shown he can only be kept in a jail cell by keeping his hands locked in a special non-see-through box because with eyes on his fingers, quote, escape would be child's play for him. 
It's true. Number 10, Chamber. Chamber is a weird character, but also a beloved character. Like many weirdos that I love to talk about, Chamber is also a mutant. His name is Jonathan Starsmore, and while he may actually have the potential to be considered Omega level, that doesn't make his powers any less weird. His powers relate to the fact that he is actually made out of pure psionic energy, or at least he was once his mutant powers manifested. When his powers first manifested, as a result, they blew a massive hole in his chest and his face, basically blowing off his jaw. While many people would be immensely harmed or even killed by such an occurrence, Chamber was not. Jono, as a result, no longer needed to breathe, eat, or drink, and his blood even did not need to course through his veins to keep him alive. As such, he is typically seen with a scarf or some other piece of clothing covering the lower half of his face, because, you know, it's not there anymore, and he communicates telepathically as his jaw was blown off when his powers first emerged. So, you know, kind of hard to talk without a jaw. Number nine, Flatman. Flatman, or Matt to his friends, is a mutant with the power of being flat and being able to stretch his limbs. He got his start working as a Mr. Fantastic impersonator at parties before eventually deciding to go into the hero business himself, joining the Great Lakes Avengers, assuming the false identity of Dr. Val Ventura. In addition to his stretching powers, Flatman can also make himself nearly invisible by turning to the side. Now, Mr. Fantastic's powers barely make any sense and are weird, but Flatman takes this to a whole new level. Unlike Mr. Fantastic, he must remain two-dimensional when using his powers, which brings up a lot of questions about the, the placement of his internal organs. But he is well-versed in a made-up fighting style he calls origami foo. So make of that what you will. Number eight, Beak. Beak is interesting in the sense that he has a physical mutation as a mutant, but one that is seemingly kind of useless. His mutation granted him wings and a beak, a bird-like appearance overall, but really these things are only an appearance alone. Beak does eventually manage to fly in the comics, but only after a long time trying to figure it out. And even then, he struggles really hard to do so, and can only fly for short distances at best. So he's no angel, if you know what I mean. Beak's real strength lies in his ability to be so likable. He makes friends easily and is usually more useful in that regard. What's even stranger though is you would think this might be challenging for someone like Beak who, you know, looks pretty abnormal. However, this seems to have the opposite effect from what you'd expect and instead of alienating people, Beak finds it all too easy to draw people near, relate to them, and make fast friends. But hey, he's a pretty nice guy, so I suppose when you really think about it, kind of does make sense. Number seven, Forget Me Not. Not to be confused with the other Marvel character with the same superhero name who controls pheromones to make men fall in love with her, Poison Ivy style. Zab has what could allegedly be called the power to be immediately forgotten by anyone he meets as soon as he leaves their field of vision. He was a member of the X-Men, although none of his teammates were aware of this most of the time. In fact, Professor X had to set up a psychic reminder to remind him once every hour that Forget-Me-Not existed. He had his uses and was especially good at reconnaissance missions, but once Xavier died, he became depressed and left the team. They didn't notice, despite the fact that he gave the eulogy. In the years since, he has taken up work on the mutant island nation of Krakoa as a detective, partnered with the Juggernaut. They make a good team, considering that Juggernaut never remembers that he has a partner. Number six, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist is known for his weird power, which, when it first manifested, actually scarred the face of a young woman he happened to be making out with at the time. His power is that he is acidic vomit, which I'm not really sure how you could best utilize that, and it would definitely make for quite the hazard if you had the flu and you know, you're feeling really nauseous. He wears a protective mouthpiece to help prevent any other dangerous cases from happening. Zeitgeist acid vomit is powerful enough that it can actually burn through solid steel. But other than that, he is just somewhat more durable than your normal mortal human, which I guess makes sense. If you are someone who can vomit acid, you have to be fairly durable to even be able to do that and live. Axel Clooney is a mutant and used to be the leader of the X-Force at one point but currently leads the rival team to Ecstatics, known as The Excellent. Which also, if you aren't reading The Excellent, you should check it out. Number five, Gold Balls. Can you guess what Gold Balls is able to shoot out of his body? If you guessed Gold Balls, congratulations! Fabio Medina discovered this really odd mutant power while falling victim to a robbery in San Diego. Armed with his Gold Balls and his signature catchphrase, Gold Balls, Fabio took the world by storm as the newest member of the X-Men. Now, his powers don't make sense when you think about them too hard. Where are these balls coming from? 
How are they being formed so quickly? You know, the kind of weird stuff that applies to a lot of superheroes. But what sends Fabio into the realm of the bizarre is the fact that it was eventually discovered that the gold balls were actually infertile eggs that he was producing and shooting at people. In light of this news, Fabio retired the name Gold Balls and started calling himself Egg. Number four, Stone Boy. I think it says it all when you belong to a team with the words substitute heroes in the title. Dave Wentham is known as Stone Boy, and he belongs to the team known as the Legion of Substitute Heroes. He is an alien from the planet Zwen who can transform into a stone form, becoming super strong and super durable, but also immediately it makes him unable to move, rendering him completely immobile. Yeah, so not super useful in combat if you want to like actually do anything or beat someone, but pretty useful I guess if you just want to survive. Let me put it another way. Stone Boy also has not been spotted since the New Earth continuity existed. I think that tells you just how ridiculous his abilities are. So ridiculous that we can't even seem to find a place for him in the massive universe that is the Prime Earth continuity. And this is even after he finally manages to gain some ability in a possible future to move somewhat while in his stone form, post zero hour that is. Number three, 3D Man. When the Skrulls abducted test pilot Chuck Chandler, the human proved more wily to deal with than they anticipated. He tried to escape on his rocket plane, but accidentally caused an explosion that destroyed both the Skrull ship and Chuck. Bizarrely, Chuck's brother Hal witnessed the explosion, which caused Chuck to become a two-dimensional being living in Hal's glasses, imprinting an image of Chuck in each lens. If you think that doesn't make much sense, just you wait. When Hal wears the glasses and concentrates really hard, he can merge the two images of his brother, causing Chuck to emerge as the 3D Man. When freed from the glasses, 3D Man has three times his normal physical abilities because, you know, 3D. As an extra bonus, Hal falls into a coma every time 3D Man comes out of his glasses, only waking back up when his brother returns to the glasses. This is a confusing and convoluted gimmick that doesn't really seem worth it if all it does is free a hero who's not particularly useful. Also, the name 3D Man must be confusing for characters who don't know every detail about his life. I mean, most things are in 3D, right? Number two, Arm Falloff Boy. Arm Falloff Boy has to be one of the weirdest ones out there. Unlike another odd hero, Bouncing Boy, who eventually in the Prime Earth continuity achieved his dream, Arm Falloff Boy has never made the cut for the Legion of Superheroes. And that's saying something, considering that the Legion of Superheroes themselves are kind of a weird superhero team by all definitions. Arm Falloff Boy has the power to detach his limbs, which he typically then attempts to use to beat his enemies with. I mean, it's pretty cool that he can remove his limbs and survive, but it's less cool that really all he does from there is use his arm or his leg as a weapon. Especially as this means he now has less limbs to like move himself with in combat, so that's really pretty silly. And so is the automatopoeia that is often used to describe the sound of his power. Plorp. What a great automatopoeia. Number one, Fluff. First appearing in excellent number three, Fluff probably takes the cake for having the most confusing, disgusting, and odd power I've seen in a long time. Fluff is able to generate bucket loads of belly button lint at will and vary its chemical composition. Now first off, Ew. Secondly, belly button lint is just stray clothing fibers that come off of your clothes and collect in your belly button. Trust me, I know. Fluff wears a costume with a very deep V, which allows his navel to feel those sweet summer breezes, which means that he wouldn't have any belly button lint, which begs the question, what exactly is he shooting out of his little tum-tum? You're free to speculate in the comments, but I refuse to give this character one more second of thought. Coming in at number 10 is Iska the Unbeaten. This spot could as easily been taken by Domino, as Iska also has a form of limited tychokinesis, which is probability manipulation, or also known as the power of luck, which is probably one of the most unexplainable powers because we can't even say that luck is for sure a real thing. But Iska takes it one step further into ridiculousness with the power of being literally unable to lose. Iska has the power to always win, no matter what, whether that is individual one on one contests, votes, or wagers, or or larger battles where she is a member of a group. In contests of skill, her powers might give her the talents she needs to win, or she might just win through, quote, 
improbable circumstances. In larger battles or wars, her powers detect the probability of both sides winning and have literally led her to defect from the losing side and join the winning side, meaning she still personally wins. It's not that we don't understand it, it's that it can't even properly be explained without sounding utterly ridiculous. Love Iska the Unbeaten though, great character. Number 9, Rainbow Girl. She is the first superpowered individual on this list affiliated with the Legion of Superheroes, but she definitely Definitely won't be the last. The team seems to be just a sticky flytrap for all the random and wacky superheroes out there in the universe. Unlike some others though, Rainbow Girl didn't actually make it onto that team as her powers were deemed not useful enough. Instead, she made it onto the Legion of Substitute Heroes, which I'm assuming is the Legion that villains either don't listen to or the Legion that just puts on a movie for villains to watch instead of just teaching them. I mean, Fighting them. Anyways, why is Rainbow Girl useless? Well, she can harness the emotional spectrum. Red for rage, orange for green, yellow for fear, green for will, blue for hope, indigo for compassion, and violet for love. But unlike the lanterns, she has no ring to use the power through, and she cycles through the colors impulsively, meaning it leads to terrible mood swings. Number eight, Legion. David Haller was living in Paris with his mother when her home was invaded by a assassination team. They took out David's stepfather before his eyes which kicked off his latent psionic powers, which he used to incinerate the brains out of the assassins. However, as he did so, he made telepathic contact with each of his victims, thus experiencing their thoughts and emotions as they died, which as you can imagine deeply affected David, forcing him into a catatonic state. The consciousness of the leader of the assassins, Jamail Karami, was absorbed and merged into David's mind. The terrible trauma that David had suffered had splintered David's personality into multiple altars, with each of these altars controlling a different psionic power. Because of this, Legion is an omega level mutant able to create spontaneous mutations of different kinds that are accompanied by new personas or alter egos to govern each one of these new mutations. Now, David himself stated that he had in his mind 200 omega level split personalities, but the X Men Rogue stated that while she was in Inside Legion, she was connected to thousands of types of powers, and there were more, quote, being born all the time. How this works, I have absolutely no idea, but it does, and he is scary. Number seven, Matter Eater Lad. Honestly, Tenzel Kem's power, one shared by his whole race, gives me more questions than it gives me answers. Matter Eater Lad's main shtick is that he can eat any substance of matter in any form, solid, liquid, or gas, in any any amount at super speed. Bismolians, which are his race, come from a planet where over time microbes made regular food inedible. In turn, their species evolved to be able to eat any form of matter thanks to producing a variety of digestive enzymes that act on specific substances, making them easier to chew and digest. Bismolians can also metabolize food almost instantly, and if they gotta, they can consume tons of food in minutes. So where I am left confused is exactly where all that stuff goes. Not to get like too into it here, but what's Tenzel's bathroom situation like? Also dental. I'm assuming their teeth are of a denser material than human teeth. One Bismolian who was part of the Yellow Lanterns ate people, which caused him to get his teeth removed as punishment. But he then had those replaced with Bismolian steel, allowing him to bite through almost anything. So my question is, could he not bite through anything before? Also, if Tenzel eats a whole asteroid, which he has done before, where does he poop? I just have so many questions and like no answers. I would just one, just one answer. Number six, The Flash. Wally West is easily the fastest of all the speedsters out there. He has an almost spiritual connection to the speed force that allows him to do a great number of things, from traveling time to creating electrical energy constructs. Thanks to a heart condition, Wally has even been able to freeze time, which basically allows him to move at super speed without actually moving at super speed. And if you can explain exactly how that works to me, I will give you one single dollar. That's all I got. The speed force is basically time, the representation of reality in motion being the very cosmic force that pushes space and time forward. So how is it that people can hold chunks of it or create lightning constructs with it or absorb speed and momentum from other people or things? As a concept for time and a cosmic force, it is really hard to both wrap your head around it and explain the speed force and all the things that speedsters like Wally West and Barry Allen are able to do with it. You kind of just have to accept that this is what it is. Number five, the Hulk. 
Everyone knows Hulk's ability to turn into a big old green monster and rip things apart with a strength that increases based on his anger. But what many of you may not know is that Hulk actually possesses a much more subtle ability to see astral projections and ghosts and even interact with them if he chooses. Hulk's astral form perception has come in handy when working with Doctor Strange as a defender. But why does Hulk have this ability? Well, Bruce Banner subconsciously feared his father's ghost would come back to haunt him. Like literally come back to haunt him. And so the Hulk just developed this mechanism to allow him to look out for that ghost. And I guess other ghosts as well. There isn't really more to it. Hulk just developed the ability that is something usually reserved for telepaths. For the super intelligent Bruce Banner it would make a bit more sense, but it's been suggested that for Bruce, the clarity of the astral forms is diminished when compared to the telepathically resistant Hulk's ability to view them. With the mortal Hulk and the connection to the one below all, perhaps that could serve as some kind of fan explanation but we don't have a real one, so. Uh. Number four, Jin Genie. Jin Genie was a mutant, but unlike almost any other mutant ever, her powers were directly dependent on how much alcohol she consumed. Becca Parker had the power to generate seismic vibrations proportionate to her amount of alcoholic intake. As you can imagine, being intoxicated in order to use your superpowers can be rather Mm, interesting. It seems like one of those things you should add to the list of things you shouldn't do while under the influence. Like don't drive, don't operate heavy machinery, don't use your superpowers to cause seismic vibrations. That kind of thing. Unfortunately, we do not get to see her use her powers that much or get an explanation for why alcohol fuels said powers because Jin Genie is de-lifed in the same comic that she was introduced in. X-Force number 116 in July 2001. Number three, Superman. Back in the day, while Superman was a fairly new being, he would kind of have whatever superpower he wanted slash needed at the time, until eventually his set table of powers was established. But there is one new power that appeared in 1958, Superman number 125, where Superman learned to fire a tiny version of himself out of his hands. After discovering a tiny spaceship that blows up in his face, Superman loses all of his abilities minus, interestingly, his invulnerability. Luckily, he gained the ability to literally fire a doll-sized version of himself out of his hand that had all of his powers and would go and beat up criminals or melt icebergs. What's hilarious is that Superman even got jealous of the little mini him. When a guided missile was on its way to the Eiffel Tower, he sent out his little buddy and an onlooker shouted, how cute! To which he said, Cute? What nonsense! Fortunately for Superman, his mini-me was destroyed by a kryptonite meteorite and Superman's powers were restored to him. Number two, Color Kid. Ulu Vak from the planet Lupra is the hero known as Color Kid, and his name does indeed suit his abilities. Vak was struck by a multicolored beam of light from another dimension that granted him the incredible power to alter the color of objects and people. And that is literally all he can do. It's stated that this power is probably caused by him changing the spectrum of light around the person or thing, but there are no real explanations given. It also does absolutely nothing for him or anyone else. Color Kid decided to use this power to go and audition to be a member of the Legion of Superheroes and, what do you know, he was rejected from the team and his powers were deemed useless. While it may be true, it feels a little bit mean, but at least he got in with the Legion of Substitute Heroes, so there's that. And in at number one is El Guapo. Robbie Rodriguez who goes by El Guapo is a mutant from the Marvel Universe. But that kind of opens up a whole bunch of questions because Robbie doesn't seem to have any powers of his own. Unless you consider his symbiotic relationship with his flying skateboard a superpower. His wiki page refers to this as a idiosyncratic manipulation, suggesting that Robbie actually has total control over his skateboard. But the problem with that statement is that his skateboard also acted with a mind of its own, like when it beat him up for cheating on his girlfriend. Now, an argument could be made that perhaps it's his own subconsciousness beating himself up for doing the wrong thing, but that's just a me theory and Marvel did not state this to be true or even explain his ability at all really. It's not telekinesis and the board seems to have a mind of its own. I don't know, you tell me what you think. Number 10, Laktuka the Knower. Laktuka is a strange new character who I kind of love. Their powers are very interesting and unique. Laktuka in essence knows the location of everything and anything. Being considered as an Omega level mutant as so many are in Araco who sit on the Great Ring, Laktuka resembles a night sky, looking like a sheet covered in stars with fabric that's made up from the cosmos. So cool. 
Tuga's powers also might not seem so great in the sense that, you know, spatial awareness, while useful, isn't exactly considered powerful, even when it's on a cosmic and universal scale, possibly even multiversal. Although the amount of times I've put down my phone and not known where it is, when it's even in my hand, I feel like having someone like you, you could just be like, yo, where's my phone? And they could be like, no, oh, it's right there. That would be pretty useful. However, when combined with the powers of a teleporter, while still strange, Latuka's powers could be seen as exceptionally great because then you can just like teleport anywhere. It's crazy. Number nine, Cypher. Cypher has what some people believe to be a pretty horrible mutant ability, especially when it comes to combat. Personally, I would kill to be able to subconsciously translate any written or spoken language, human or alien. He can also subconsciously understand body language and intention as well as decipher codes and computer languages. After he was resurrected, and also so Marvel could make him actually useful, everything he sees is interpreted into language, basically making him able to read life. Everything I just said is strange enough, but I can wrap my head around it to some degree, I guess. But don't you dare sit here and tell me that this man can speak binary code. In New Mutants Volume 3, number 14, a guy operating a mech comes upon Cypher during a battle, and Dougie Boy speaks to the mech saying, Hello, you don't have to do this. You know, I can set you free, show you how to think for yourself. The dude operating the mech understands him, since he's speaking English, but for some reason, the mech, which isn't artificial intelligence, also understands him, boots the operator out, and begins talking in zeros and ones. What? Number eight, Manifold. If you thought Lactuka was an interesting character, wait till you hear about Manifold. Although with Lactuka being newer, you may already know of Manifold because Manifold's been around for a while. But do you know how exactly his powers work? That is what is so cool, but can also be kind of confusing. Manifold is seen as a massively powerful teleporter, but the interesting thing is he actually isn't. I mean, he is really powerful, but he's not technically a teleporter. Instead, Eden and Fessy's mutant powers are based in communication, specifically communication with space. He is considered a universal shaper who can basically communicate with the universe of Earth 616 and ask it to bend and fold for him, which is how he appears to teleport himself and others such great distances. But really, it's just talking. Number seven, Thumbelina. Christina Anderson has an ability that quite a few characters in comic books have. That would be the ability to shrink. Thumbelina can reduce herself down to about a quarter of an inch tall. That ability is perfectly fine in my eyes. Like I said, lots of characters can do this. My problem with Thumbelina, and also some other shrinkers, is how the heck do they retain their full size strength when they get smaller? Or in Thumbelina's case, how the hell does she get stronger when she shrinks? I'm sorry to try and bring physics into any debate about superheroes and their various powers, but it makes absolutely no sense in the laws of physics that someone who is smaller can be more strong than they were when they were regular size. Ants, for example, if they were the size of a person, they would be insanely strong as they are able to carry 20 times their body weight. So that's like an average person being able to carry like a small SUV or something. But since ants are so damn small, that means they can carry like a leaf or something. Thumbelina should not be able to knock someone out when she is a quarter of an inch tall. I'm sorry. That's all I gotta say. Number six, Iska the Unbeaten. Iska's powers are really cool. Don't get me wrong. But how does it work exactly? I feel like we still have a lot of exploring to do with this character before we can really firmly answer that question. I've been reading Iska since she came into the comics and I'm still confused. Iska made her first appearance during the 2020 X-Men series, appearing in a tie-in issue to the X-Men crossover event Ten of Swords, which I still personally hold a great fondness for. As such, I also hold a fondness for this character, the sister-in-law to Apocalypse through his mutant wife Genesis. Iska is a mutant of the long lost mutant island of Araco, and her powers allow her to always win, but sometimes it also force her to always win, like against her will, and then other times, betting against her even can affect the result of a contest, even if she herself isn't involved in that. How does that work? Her powers also do not just extend to physical fights, but all means of competition. So like, if you're, I don't know, doing a coin toss with Iska, she gotta win. Number five, tag. Okay, I actually kinda wish I had Brian Cruz's power. It just seems like the perfect chaos creating ability. Tag's ability, known as the pariah effect, allows him to use a form of telepathy when he touches someone that causes the target to emit a psionic signal, which would make them a target for others to run away from or to run towards. Whichever way people would run, they would do it while being fully aware of what they're doing, 
but unable to control themselves. If they were being controlled to run away, they would continue to do so until they were about 100 feet away. But if the signal caused them to run towards whoever it is, then they would dogpile on top of the target. What's strange is that he could also control who was affected by the ability, like how? He only made one person it, so how does he decide who runs away and who doesn't? He could also make whoever was it run away from themselves. So in other words, they would just run uncontrollably and in random directions, which is actually kind of hilarious. He also would always say, you're it, which is kind of misleading because that person can't tag someone else to make them it, which is kind of unfair as well. So Number four, Dupe. Ranking a little lower for me because he's not necessarily a mutant, maybe, is Dupe. Dupe is a creature who often is lying in with the mutants, but maybe isn't one? We don't really know what Dupe is, never mind his power set. Dupe is basically an unstoppable force and has been implied to be a mutant, an alien, a mutant alien, or something else entirely. As of right now, his origin is classified on his own wiki with him being an artificial being, which really doesn't help to clarify anything. If he is a mutant, and I'm not saying conclusively that he is or that he isn't, as I still feel like his origin in general can be really contested at this point, his power is really are hard to classify. It's kind of like he's an old school superhero in the sense that he seems to have powers for whatever task he needs to accomplish at the time, including resurrection, the power of funk, love eyes, breaking the fourth wall, moving between panels, and even magic. Dupe has been spotted seemingly fighting alongside the mutants as recently as the AXE Judgment Day event, implying that he is at least allied with Krakoa. For those of you that don't think he's a mutant, I still kind of think he might be. Who knows? Number three, Hijack. The mutant known as David Bond has the oddly specific ability to control vehicular mechanisms with his thoughts. Basically, this is a form of technopathy, and he has been able to control automobiles and shield helicarriers, starting their engines, steering them, and even opening their doors. He has also been shown to be able to control high-tech suits of armor. Now, uh, this kind of leads me to have more questions than anything else. Like, can he control motorcycles? What about bicycles? Rollerblades? Does the vehicle need to have an internal computer? What's the deal with opening and closing car doors? Does that not count as a form of telepathy? Why can he control high-tech suits of armor? What if a car has mechanical issues? Can he tell? Does the vehicle need to be in complete functioning order? Does it need to be able to turn on? I have so many questions and like no answers. Number two, I scream. I scream. Oh boy, what a wonderful weirdo this is. You know how much I have a strange affinity for mutants who have eye-based mutations and visual power sets if you're you know, usually on this channel, and if you are usually on this channel, you should subscribe if you aren't already. But despite the I in Ice Cream's name, he is not one of those. Instead, his mutant power seems to be that he can turn himself into ice cream. Get it? I scream, ice cream. He's only appeared once, I believe, in the comics, making a singular appearance in a strange comic in and of itself from Marvel, Obnoxio the Clown, issue number one. In this weird single issue, Obnoxio is a clown and he's employed to act as entertainment for a surprise birthday party at the expansion that is being hosted for young X member Kitty Pride. While this is going on, Ice Cream, a villain, also appears and sneaks into the mansion, hoping to coordinate a stealthy attack on the X Men. Instead, he ends up attempting to get Obnoxio out of the way, which he kind of succeeds in, only to later be captured in a block of ice, because he can turn into ice cream. What I want to know is what was Ice Cream's plan of attack with his power set? Is anyone on the main team featured here lactose intolerant? Was that his plan? I have to know. Number one, El Guapo. Tell me that someone, thanks to genetic mutation, can fold space or speak binary code or always win, and I'll look at you sideways, but I'll nod and walk away. But you tell me that some guy named Robbie Rodriguez, thanks to a genetic mutation, has no actual powers of his own, but instead has a symbiotic relationship with a super-powered flying skateboard, which followed his mental commands and sometimes even seemed to have a personality of its own or, or acted on his subconscious thoughts. I'm sorry, I'm out. I'm done. Where did the skateboard where come from? How did he discover this ability? When did this mutant power activate? Can he do this to other skateboards or inanimate objects in general? You can't just give someone the most unique and insane mutant ability and explain none of it. Number 10, Zeitgeist. Okay, he didn't actually initially start as a villain. Instead, Axel Clunny was actually the leader of the celebrity superhero mutant group known as X-Force. But after his death and revival, he did indeed become a criminal and villain. Now, 
Zeitgeist has a pretty unfortunate mutant superpower that first manifested in a very unfortunate incident. Basically, Zeitgeist could spew acidic vomit from his mouth, and he wore a protective mouthpiece in and out of his costume. He discovered this power during a little makeout sesh at a beach where he accidentally vomited and melted the girl's face half off. She did survive, but the real kicker is he can't even remember her name. See, he's not really a good guy at all. It was shown that his vomit could burn through 10 centimeter thick steel in less than 30 seconds. Again, not a horrible power, just really, really unfortunate. Number 9. Armless Tiger Man Gustav Hertz worked in a mechanical laboratory in Munich, Germany during the 1940s. Now one day, his arms were caught in a machine and were amputated. Surviving the experience and given reading material on how to operate day to day using his mouth and feet, Hertz developed skill in using his teeth and his feet in place of his amputated arms. He has sharpened his teeth into fangs to use as weapons and has above average strength allowing him to bend steel with his mouth. His toes are also very dexterous, allowing him to throw daggers with them, which is actually kind of cool in a little bit of a weird way. He was an enemy of the World War II hero Angel, which is not Warren Worthington. He was also an enemy of Wakanda, and after death, he even came into sort of indirect conflict with Hercules. That's cool. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't already, make sure to press that subscribe button to join us here at Top 10 Nerd. We're almost at 1.30 million subscribers, so definitely get on that. Number 8. The Living Eraser The Living Eraser is no mere man, you earthbound fools. Sorry, I love that quote from this character, it's kind of hilarious. Kutza here is actually a Thalumian, and he was the agent of the Supremacy. And as an agent, he would use his Dimensionalizer to kidnap scientists for nefarious designs. Ooh. The Living Eraser's Dimensionalizer can transport people to other dimensions, primarily between Earth and Dimension Z. As the Dimensionalizer passes over a surface, it turns it invisible, making it appear as if the victim is being erased. When the entire surface has been transformed, the being or object is transported across dimensions to its destination. If he literally erased people, it would be way more scary, but sending them to another dimension is a fixable thing in comics, so it's not exactly the worst. Number 7. Boomerang, but from Marvel. Fred Myers was born in Australia, but moved to America when he was a small child. Now in America, his great love was baseball, and he developed an extraordinary pitching arm. He became a professional baseball player in the minor leagues after graduating high school, and a few years later entered into to the major leagues. Within a year though, he was suspended for accepting bribes. Now with an arm like that and no job, he was eventually contracted by the subversive criminal organization, the Secret Empire, and offered employment. They designed special weaponry for him to exploit his pitching ability, and he became their special operative, codenamed Boomerang. Now why Boomerang specifically, and not like... I don't know, a baseball? Because he was born in Australia and that is the only projectile they have in that country, obviously. Number six, Count Vertigo. Now you listen here, okay? Count Werner Vertigo is of royal blood. He is an heir to the throne of Latava, truly the most prestigious of titles, okay? But don't you think for one second that means he has cool superpowers, because he doesn't. Count Vertigo has a hereditary inner ear defect that affected his balance. That's not a superpower. Vertigo had a small electronic device implanted in his right temple, though, that compensated this problem. Tinkering with that device, Vertigo learned he was able to affect other people's balance as well, distorting their perceptions so that they literally could not tell up from down which is an effect known as vertigo, and he used this skill to fight Green Arrow. He'd also use it to join up with the Suicide Squad and Checkmate, using his powers to make people dizzy to his advantage. Very nice. Number 5, Codpiece. Personally, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall when the character of Codpiece was conceived. Codpiece is honestly just a guy with a massive inferiority complex. That's what it says on his wiki though. I'm not, like, I didn't make that up. Okay. Look, in high school, a girl told him he wasn't tall enough, but he thought she meant something else. And so instead of getting like a broken muffler or giant wheels on a giant truck, Codpiece created a suit that had a Codpiece multi-weapon built into the crotch area. The Codpiece had a wide variety of functions, including a cannon, missiles, a sonic attack, two retractable boxing gloves, and a variety of tools such as drills and scissors. If there is one way to compensate, it is by becoming a multi-tool. Look. 
He's doing the best with what he's got, okay? Number four, Polka Dot Man. While this character got a bit of a change up in the recent Suicide Squad movie, Polka Dot Man, real name Abner Krill, in the comics didn't have a power. He instead wore a suit that was covered in different colored polka dots. When these polka dots were attached to the suit, they had no function, but once they were pulled off, they would enlarge and turn into different gimmicky weapons like flying buzz saws, blinding sun-shaped dots, dots that turn into fist-shaped projectiles, and even one that turned into a portal. That sounds kind of cool. The dots would even self-destruct to prevent anyone from studying the tech. The only problem was that the polka dot gadgets and the electronic suit were expensive to maintain, and Krill was just literally unable to afford it sometimes. The struggle is real, man. I feel you. Number three, Paste Pot Pete. 1963's Strange Tales number 104 states, Human Torch battles the most fantastic foe of all. Pace Pot Pete and his unbeatable super weapon. Now said unbeatable super weapon just happened to be a glue gun that fired an extremely adhesive multi-polymer liquid that he invented. Pace Pot Pete, otherwise known as Peter Petruski or even Trapster, created a not hot glue gun and his idea was to use this to commit crimes. As you can imagine, the Human Torch really had no problems whatsoever taking down old Pete here and he continued to do so multiple times because Pete does not know when to give up apparently. Number two, Super Speed. Super Speed is one of my favorite all-time superpowers around. I think it is super powerful, crazy powerful really. And honestly, although I know we have famous heroes like The Flash running around, I don't think Super Speed gets enough hype or love or appreciation, which is why I wanted to put it on this list. I mean, The Flash has managed to save and endanger the world using his speed force powers on more than one occasion, showing you just how epic these abilities can be when slash if you get creative enough. Well, I guess if the writers and artists are creative enough, rather. I guess I should say, since they're the ones telling us the stories. Super speed is a power that has been used to do a multitude of things, including speed learning and speed reading, which is probably one of my favorite uses for this ability. That and the ability to phase for people that can move that fast. That and time travel, which is another thing people can do with it. You can see Superman use his super speed to do some super fast reading, and you can even see in Marvel the mutant hero Tempo use her ability to manipulate time to speedily run an algorithm created by Forge thousands of time in a few short minutes in order to help her fellow secret X-Men find Deathbird's ship. Now that is more time manipulation, but still, what I'm saying is the faster you can operate something or read, the more you can get done and the more knowledge you're able to have. I mean, Superman, Flash, they could basically both be super geniuses if they just use their power in this way in theory. Although some people might say that they are super geniuses. I don't typically consider Superman to be a super genius, but he could be one. Man can read like probably all the books in the world in like, I don't know, probably a day or something crazy. He's really fast. And in at number one is El Guapo. Robbie Rodriguez, who goes by El Guapo, is a mutant from the Marvel Universe. But that kind of opens up a whole bunch of questions because Robbie doesn't seem to have any powers of his own. Unless you consider his symbiotic relationship with his flying skateboard a superpower. His wiki page refers to this as a idiosyncratic manipulation, suggesting that Robbie actually has total control over his skateboard. But the problem with that statement is that his skateboard also acted with a mind of its own, like when it beat him up for cheating on his girlfriend. Now, an argument could be made that perhaps it's his own subconsciousness beating himself up for doing the wrong thing, but that's just a me theory and Marvel did not state this to be true or even explain his ability at all really. It's not telekinesis and the board seems to have a mind of its own. I don't know, you tell me what you think. Number 10, Starbrand. Starbrand isn't so much a singular person as it is a power in and of itself. Right now, the current Starbrand in the 616 universe is Brandy Selby, daughter of Suzanne Selby, who became the Starbrand after the one before her, Kevin Connor, passed away. The Avengers stepped in and had to help Suzanne deliver little Brandy, an act that caused Suzanne to pass away and attach the Starbrand to Brandy. Since Brandy's birth, she's used the Starbrand to fly and survive without oxygen and in the vacuum of space. And she can use extremely powerful energy blasts that can take down multiple people at once. But the star brand itself is an incredible source of power, proven by other people who have wielded it. The bearer of Earth 723 star brand used the power to create music that can influence human behavior to the extent that he has unified the people of his world as a single hive mind. 
On Earth 541, the star brand bearer has conquered his world and installed himself as the head of a benevolent monarchical dictatorship, but like a good one that actually somehow works despite the lack of freedoms. Number 9, Mantis. Mantis actually got her start in comics when she used her abilities to reform Swordsman or Jacques Duquesne, which actually got her into the Avengers. Mantis's powers and abilities are more than what you may have gathered from her film counterpart. Mantis has complete control over her body, which in turn gives her peak human agility, the ability to accelerate healing through force of will, and an empathic nature enabling her to communicate telepathically with and sense the emotions of others as psychic vibrations. She can also control her heart and respiration respiratory rate and blood flow. Her master of the Kotati priests martial arts, which focuses on the manipulation of nerve endings and pressure points, has enabled her to knock out beings as powerful as Thor. And her telepathic and empathic abilities are improved upon thanks to her two little antennae she has coming out of her head. It doesn't stop there though. Mantis also gained abilities when she merged with the Kotati, such as being able to communicate with both plants and animals and survive in space in a physically solid energy form. She can transfer herself from plant life to plant life across interstellar distances or dimensions, creating a new body from the plant life where she ends up. She can transmit and receive telepathic impressions, she has precognitive powers, and more recently she can fire powerful pyrokinetic energy blasts, form energy shields, communicate directly with cosmic beings such as eternity and death, and completely control her personal energies as well as her physical form. Number 8. Tigra When Greer Nelson first came on the scene, she was just known as the cat, and was given powers tied to her costume. But that all changed when she became Tigra, mutating into a human-tiger hybrid in a ritual that bound her to the Cat People, which is a very silly name, but was a race of humanoid cats who were created in the Middle Ages. Now before you laugh at her for looking kinda silly, just know that in her Tiger form, Tigra is granted some awesome abilities. Her superhuman strength allows her to lift over 10 tons, with her leg muscles allowing her to perform a standing jump of 12 feet. She can run at speeds of around 70 miles per hour, has superhuman durability, agility, reflexes, and stamina, and as we all know, cats have heightened senses, and like to knock things off of where you carefully place them. And as far as I know, the former is the same with Tigra, whose senses are about 10 times that of a human. Tigra's eyesight can sense the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, allowing for night vision. She can more easily detect the movements of an opponent. Her hearing is so strong that she can detect a ball of tissue paper being dropped at a distance of 40 feet, and her sense of smell lets her track people. More than that, she can even detect subtle alterations in the composition of perspiration that reflects mood or emotions and is highly sensitive to pheromones. Her claws and fangs can cut through steel, and like Mantis, she is an empath able to enhance and control emotions to a degree. Number 7, Monica Rambeau. With the title of Captain Marvel, it's easy to not fully understand the powers of Monica Rambeau, but they are different to her other Captain Marvel counterparts, and in my opinion, she is my favorite of the characters to take on the title. After being bombarded, with extra dimensional energy emitted by a stolen device, Monica Rambeau acquired the ability to convert her body mass into and control any form of energy of the electromagnetic spectrum. Those energy forms include visible light, radio waves, electricity, X rays, microwaves, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation, cosmic rays, and gamma radiation. But whenever she comes into contact with new forms of energy, such as neutrinos, Monica can mimic that energy's wavelength as well, given enough time, and she'll be able to actually transform into it. As you can imagine, there is a lot she can do with these various forms of energy. Flight, speed of light travel, intangibility, invisibility, energy blasts and absorption, hologram creation and appearance alteration, size alteration, power boosting, and she can even become a kind of hard solid light. Number 6, Shang Chi. Shang Chi is one of, if not the greatest martial artist on earth. He was trained from birth to become the ultimate warrior. He can take on multiple opponents at once and can even defeat people much more superhumanly powerful than him. He is particularly particularly skilled in Chinese martial arts, but his skill branches out to many, many more. In one case, he even worked with Spider-Man to create a new martial art based on Peter's powers. Shang Chi also is able to manipulate Qi energy, which he can use to enhance his strength and durability and can even detect others based on their energy, like he did when he detected the psionically masked Jean Grey. But Shang Chi gets a much more significant power boost when he is using the Ten Rings. He can use the rings as projectiles, manipulate their size, and even use them to levitate and fly. The rings grant the martial master superhuman strength, durability, speed, and stamina, and he can even manipulate energies from the rings to do many things including projecting said energy and creating an energy-based blast. And then just to top it all off, thanks to the other side of
of his heritage, Shang-Chi inherited his mother's psionic abilities to communicate with his blood relatives, even the deceased ones. Number 5. Moon Dragon It may come as a surprise, but Heather Douglas is actually one of the most powerful human born telepaths in existence. She gained her power after she trained under the Shaolorn monks of Titan thanks to Thanos' father, Mentor, taking her in. Her telepathic abilities rival and surpass even those of powerful mutants like Professor X. With this power, she has been able to mentally enslave an entire planet of beings who were constantly at war with each other, bringing peace to said planet. She has been in a psionic stalemate with the Sorcerer Supreme, and she's even straight up de-lifed a clone of Thanos who, at the time, had even greater mental powers than Professor X. Her powers are so powerful in fact that they can maintain themselves subconsciously, meaning that even if she is unconscious, she will maintain the effects of said powers. A huge part of her character, even the reason for her awesome Moon Dragon name, comes from the fact that she is, or was, actually under the influence of an extremely powerful entity known as the Dragon of the Moon, who has been manipulating her for a long time, even initially letting Heather believe she had overcome the demon. But thanks to this dragon, she has been able to take on a dragon form where she can move faster than light, survive in space, and was super strong and durable. Number 4. Jack of Hearts Jonathan Hart is a hero you may not have heard of. Jack Hart was the son of a brilliant scientist. A scientist that created the ridiculously efficient liquid sci-fi fuel called Zero Fluid, that in a tragic comic book backstory was exposed to Jack and gave him his awesome abilities. Due to the cellular mutation that took place after his zero fluid exposure, Jonathan Hart is now able to produce pink concussive energy beams and blasts from his hands and body, taking up the incredibly clever name of Jack of Hearts, apparently in honor of his father's love of card games, and not because it's actually his name, basically. His biological structure was reformatted to basically give him the superhuman starter pack abilities, but his strength specifically has been able to lift 25 tons. He has enhanced speed, stamina, healing factor, and durability, able to withstand some pretty heavy hits and survive in the vacuum of space. But in addition, thanks to a symbiote energy sump device, Jack went through another mutation which gave him the ability to think as fast as a computer can, and he can retain and retrieve stored information from the deep recesses of his brain, which is Pretty cool. Number three, Cersei. Cersei is a member of the Eternals, an evolutionary offshoot of humanity gifted with amazing powers and abilities to look after the human race throughout the ages. Which is similar to, but also just a smidgen bit different from the Eternals movie counterparts. As an Eternal, Cersei's body is augmented by cosmic energy and she has total mental control over her entire molecular structure, which allows her and other Eternals to be immortal, indestructible, and invulnerable to anything which isn't stronger than the cosmic energy that augmented them in the first place. Cersei has enough strength to bench 20 tons, but thanks to her telekinesis, she can augment that to lift about 25. Her telekinesis also allows Cersei to fly at about 760 miles per hour. She can project cosmic energy in heat, light, or concussive blasts. She has telepathy that allows her to hypnotize weak-minded fools. She can teleport, but hates it. And she is even able to project images from her mind, which is a super cool ability. Those are all the powers we don't see in the Eternals movie though, because arguably, the ability that she has the most talent in is her matter transmutation ability, which allows Cersei to transmute nearly any item or being into almost whatever she wishes. Number two, Darkhawk. The coolest name for the strangest mashup of ideas. Christopher Powell was the son of a cop and a district attorney. When he witnessed his father taking a bribe from a mob boss, he stumbled upon an amulet that gave him the ability to transfer his consciousness to the Dark Hawk armor. Now, this ancient Shi'ar magical armor is very cool, and it gave its user quite the set of abilities. Obviously, the classic superhuman strength, speed, durability, agility, and reflexes are all here in excess, but the armor allowed for armament conjuration from the extra dimensional expanse and could manifest mutations from Chris's body at will. The armor had glider wings that allowed him to fly on air currents, but he gained an upgrade that brought his flight to interstellar distances and speeds. Chris is able to heal from even the worst of wounds by just switching back to his human body. The armor can generate force fields, generate dark energy blasts, give its user enhanced vision, and can switch to a bunch of different modes going transparent, doubling up its armor, and fighting with even stronger weapons. The problem for Darkhawk is that he has this very Iron Man vibe that kind of mixes with a Wolverine vibe due to his fist claws. It also mixes with a bit of a Spider-Man vibe as well, and it all just didn't really allow him to stay relevant past the 90s. And in at number one is Hawkeye. Okay, look, hear me out. 
Yes, Clint Barton is essentially just a regular human man. But despite that, and likely because of his abilities and talents, he is considered a power level 4 according to Nick Fury's intel. Those aforementioned abilities include being a master of archery and the use of regular bows, longbows, compound bows, and crossbows with basically perfect accuracy, able to fire multiple arrows at a single target in a few seconds. But he now also has near perfect precision with any aimed or thrown weapon. He is at the peak level of human eyesight possible. I don't know how you train that, but there you go. He is in peak athletic human condition with peak strength, endurance, and reflexes. He is an expert acrobat, tactician, and master martial artist, but listing off his abilities isn't really going to give you a proper understanding. So what has he done? In Avengers Volume 3, number 14, Hawkeye was cornered by 17 marksmen and took them all down without taking a single life. In Hawkeye Volume 4, number 1, Clint ran into a wanted criminal in a bar and took him down silently, fracturing his neck with a deck of cards. Number 10, No Girl. No Girl is a creation of Grant Morrison's. Grant Morrison, when they were writing X Men, decided to create a bunch of new mutants, and all of them were about as weird as you'd imagine someone like Morrison would make them. No Girl, of course, is, well, no exception. Her powers are actually pretty cool, but the fact that she didn't really have a body to speak of for a good amount of the time we've known her in the comics was was not really as cool. Of course, this has since been somewhat fixed, as Martha no longer uses the codename No Girl, but instead, after having been given a body by the Five, is known as Cerebella. Cerebella's powers are psionic, but considering that she no longer has her original body as it was taken from her by the U-Men when she was only a teenager, it's often been implied that she actually requires substances to her brain to stay alive. Prior to being given a body again, Cerebella as No Girl was suspended in a liquid-filled sphere, or tank and lived her life that way, as a brain. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving what we do here at Top 10 Nerds, please go check out our newest channel, Most Amazing Top 10 Anime, and give it a subscribe. Number 9, Angel. Angel might be one of the original X-Men, but that doesn't automatically mean that he is one of the all-stars or omega levels when it comes to mutants. Angel's mutant power is that he has wings, which he can use to fly. Angel also possesses hollow bones, which allow him to be light enough to soar using said wings, but also make maybe make him <laughs> a little bit hollow and weak in other ways. He is an extremely gifted and skilled flyer, having trained for years with how to use his wings, and he's also an adept businessman, being Warren Worthington III in civilian life and hailing from a wealthy and respected family. However, it's still pretty easy to defeat Angel when you need to. Even recently in the comics in X-Force issue number 30, we've seen him kidnapped and literally had one of his wings cut off as a result of people being angry and frustrated with the revelation that mutants have recently unlocked their own secret to immortality. Just goes to show you how easy it is to mess with Angel. It's kind of sadly too easy. Number 8, Brew. I honestly love Brew, and now his powers are basically the coolest around, but for a while there, he wasn't really the coolest per se. You see, Brew may be a mutant, but he's also part of the Brood, so his mutant superpower was actually nothing quite so exciting as some of the other more well-known mutants out there. Brew's mutant power and mutation actually make him compassionate, which for a member of the Brood is a super power really, as Brood don't really feel compassion, empathy, or sympathy at all like humans do. But for an X-Men, well, it's kind of less impressive. It should be noted though that even though it doesn't sound impressive, for a Brood, compassion is pretty amazing to have as an ability. And currently, Brew is also king of the Brood, so there's also that, which makes him pretty cool now, but wasn't always. Number 7, Star Fox. Star Fox's powers aren't bad in the way of them being, I would say, non-useful. They're more bad in the sense that they're considered to be, um, kind of shady. Star Fox is also known as Eros, originally named Aeron at birth by his parents. He had his name changed to Eros when he was still young due to his love of the ladies and his reputation for being a ladies man. Eros in Greek mythology on Earth is known for being the god of passion and fertility, so this is pretty fitting. Star Fox is Thanos' brother, but instead of being a notorious villain like him, he would become a hero and even an Avenger. He has a lot of powers, but the one people tend to focus on when it comes to his more problematic powers is his ability to create emotional bridges and connections between people and affect one's feeling of pleasure, which has caused many to feel that Star Fox has manipulated others not just for altruistic purposes, but also for his own benefits as well. And also, you know, there's the question of consent 
pretty big question. Number six, red bee. Aw, uh, I know a lot of people love red bee, so I feel like this is a bit of, of a sad one to have on this list, but unfortunately, hey, I gotta pick some folks. Even if I myself love them as characters, you know, we gotta, we gotta say some people got some bad powers. Red B is Richard Rayleigh, who is a hero from the World War II era in the New Earth continuity, who mainly fought his enemies with his amazing animal training skills and his B sidekick, initially known back in his quality comics days as Michael. Michael the B, who was extremely intelligent and could also sting multiple times without perishing. No, I'm not kidding, it was a real thing. Tragically, Red B was of course killed off pretty early in the New Earth continuity. However, the brilliant part of this seemingly more lame character is that Red B is also a fan favorite and has actually been brought back a few different times in different iterations due to him having a small but pretty passionate fan base, I'd say. If you like Red B, let me know in the comments. I know you're out there, the Red B fans. Number five, Peacemaker. Peacemaker is one of my favorite characters lately from DC. Thanks to John Cena's portrayal of the character in his own self-titled miniseries, but I still acknowledge that this is one of the worst characters out there when it comes to his powers and his capabilities and just kind of a lot of stuff about him. In the comics, you might argue that Peacemaker's power actually stems from kind of his mental illness. The fact that he is extremely well trained. Before the DCEU, Gunn and Cena made him cool, Peacemaker was Christopher Smith, a man haunted by his father's untimely end and past, who was trained to be basically a killer, believing that any force was necessary if it meant attaining some level of peace. If I had to sum up his depiction in the comics previously in one word, I would have said, unhinged. I still think we'll get some of that explored more as the show progresses. We already kind of got some of it in season one, but I do think it'll be approached from a more real and grounded place as opposed to just making Chris feel like the violent and often misguided lunatic that he seemed to be back in the New Earth continuity. Number four, Doorman. It's time to get into some of the weirdness that is the Great Lakes Avengers. Being that this isn't the mainstay Avengers team, and I don't even think they're technically affiliated with the Avengers, like I don't think the Avengers want to be affiliated with the the Great Lakes Avengers. They are about as strange and in some cases unimpressive as you could possibly expect. Doorman is one of the members of the Great Lakes Avengers. As lackluster as his name is, his power can sometimes be very useful, but the issue with it is is that it's quite specific, so finding the right and best way to utilize it can be challenging. Although to his credit, I'd like to say that Doorman actually does a pretty good job with how and when he uses his powers to make himself seem pretty useful. Doorman's power allows him to create in essence a doorway or a door between adjacent areas that are separate you know, like by a wall. So he's kind of like a, a moving portal, which can be useful in some cases and, you know, much less useful in other cases, depending on the scenario. Number three, Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Oh boy. So Big Bertha can basically transform her body, adding mass, weight, and height as needed, and even controlling where the added mass goes specifically in regards to her figure and the added weight's distribution, which doesn't sound too bad on paper, right? But then the other part of this is that Big Bertha is actually Ashley Crawford, who was originally known for being a tall, thin, runway supermodel. Ashley, of course, can transform from bigger to smaller, but to do so, she has to vomit. I think you can see how this is pretty problematic and why this made the list. More recently in the comics, Marvel has kind of tried to redeem this character and her power set, but needless to say, it's likely for this very reason that we haven't really seen Big Bertha around in the comics for some time. They're trying though. Number two, Color Kid. Ulu Vak from the planet Lupra is the hero known as Color Kid, and his name does indeed suit his abilities. Vak was struck by a multicolored beam of light from another dimension that granted him the incredible power to alter the color of objects and people. And that is literally all he can do. It's stated that this power is probably caused by him changing the spectrum of light around the person or thing, but there are no real explanations given. It also does absolutely nothing for him or anyone else. Color Kid decided to use this power to go and audition to be a member of the Legion of Superheroes, and what do you know, he was rejected from the team and his powers were deemed useless. Well, it may be true, it feels a little bit mean, but at least he got in with the Legion of Substitute Heroes, so there's that. Number one, Oniromancy. While many might not think about how powerful this can be, and might be quick to write dream powers off as, you know, dreams aren't real. They're actually super powerful. We can look at a few different characters when it comes to dream manipulation. One of the newer additions to Marvel Comics in the world of mutants is Somnus, who was retconned to be a past lover of Aka Heroes, aka Dawkins. Somnus's power allows him to put people to sleep and from there basically control their dreams. Therefore, although he and Akihiro only 
had a one night stand in their dreams they actually lived a whole life together. So that one night to them both was basically a lifetime. Similarly we can look to DC where we have the Lord of Dreams. Now Daniel but formerly Morpheus. Although the dream lord of the endless technically doesn't have a formal name and exists as long as there are dreams to be had. These two versions of the characters though are made to be distinct through the Sandman narrative so that's why I refer to them as being different people with names because that's how they're referred to in the comics. Dream has shown us over the years just how powerful manipulating one's dreams and nightmares can be. The answer is it can be like crazy powerful. People are always like what are you gonna do mess with my dreams and he's like yeah I'm gonna like trap you in a nightmare for your whole life and then you'll die. How does that sound? <laughs> Doesn't sound very good does it? Number 10 super mathematics. I'm not entirely sure how super mathematics works or what makes it different than regular math, but the ability to do complex equations on the fly could be useful for someone like Superman and could explain how he's able to adjust his speed to match the velocity of a falling person and catch them without seriously injuring them. This power is best remembered for a panel that shows Superman holding a jar of beans and guessing how many beans are in the jar by weighing them in calculating the number based on weight. Although in this panel he actually gets the math wrong by saying that 20 times 16 times 10 is 32,000. It's actually 3,200. I figured that out using regular math. Super Mathematics made a more recent appearance in Superman Earth 1 Issue 1 when Clark Kent visits a research lab and immediately solves a complex equation that has been baffling the scientists. Number 9. Super Weaving. Appearing in Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane number 15, this power was not actually performed by Superman but by a distant but identical relative of his who escaped from the bottle city of Kandor. Van Z wanted to marry Lois Lane, but decided to settle for her doppelganger, an heiress named Sylvia. In order to prove his love for her, Van Z got her several elaborate gifts including the wedding dress of Helen of Troy. Seeing that it was damaged, Van Z unraveled the threads and used his super weaving to weave a new, more modern wedding dress. Now, since Superman is also Kryptonian, we can assume that he also has this ability. This could explain how Superman repairs his costume when it becomes damaged, something that comes up more often than you'd think. Of course, one could argue that super weaving is just regular weaving at super speed. Number 8. Shooting a mini Superman out of your hand When Superman temporarily lost most of his powers while investigating a crashed alien ship in Superman number 125, he gained the strange ability ability to shoot a miniature version of himself out of his hand. This proxy had all of Superman's classic powers, allowing him to pick up Superman's slack while he remained depowered. This is obviously silly, but undeniably useful. Instead of facing danger head on, Superman could send his, this miniature version of himself to do the work for him. It's an efficient delegation. Heck, that would be useful for anyone. Imagine being able to send a mini me out to pick up your dry cleaning. Proxy Superman only lasted for one story before dying from kryptonite exposure, thus returning Superman to his full power. Number seven, super ventriloquism. Another power that hasn't been seen post crisis. Superman used to have the ability to throw his voice and talk without moving his lips. While this is impressive, what makes this power really super is that it comes with the ability to perfectly imitate anyone's voice. This ability was used pretty consistently over the years to trick criminals into acting against their own self-interest, such as in the power's first appearance in Superman number 13, when Clark and Lois were being held hostage by armed gunmen. Superman used his ventriloquism to throw his voice so that Lois and the thugs would look behind them, giving him enough time to change into his super suit, run out the door, fly around the block, come in through the window, punch out the goons, and change back into Clark Kent before Lois could turn back around. Personally, I think that if he has the speed to do all that, he could have eliminated a couple of steps from that plan, but what do I know? Superman used this ability several more times to battle evil and to gaslight Lois Lane into thinking that Crypto the Super Pup could talk. This power would be useful in a modern context as the ability to mimic any voice could be used to open, say, voice control locks, but being Superman he could always just rip open any door. Number 6. 
super reading. This is an ability that Superman still uses from time to time, but it isn't talked about very often. Superman has the ability to read at super speed and retain all of the information. Now, for the average person, this would be great when cramming for an exam, but the Man of Steel often uses it for more practical purposes. For example, in Superman Red Sun, the Russian Superman uses his super reading in order to learn new languages in a matter of moments so that he can negotiate with his enemies in their native languages. In a more extreme example found in Action Comics Volume 2, Number 12, when Lois Lane is gravely injured and Superman uses his super reading to read every medical textbook ever written in order to quickly learn how to perform life-saving surgery on Lois. This power is essentially a way to learn any skill you need in a matter of moments, so it's surprising that Superman isn't shown using it more often. But I suppose there aren't many practical skills you need when you can crush coal into diamond with your bare hands. Number 5. Time Travel in the 1978 Superman film, the Man of Steel spun the world backwards in order to turn back time and reverse the death of Lois Lane. This is the most infamous example of this, but you may be surprised to learn that this was not a power made up for the movies, and actually has precedent in the comics. Now, it's not that surprising that this ability would be useful, but what is surprising is what Clark chooses to use it for. In Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, number 20, Superman, having grown tired of Lois constantly snooping around, trying to prove that Clark Kent is the Man of Steel, decides to travel back in time to before he started working at the Daily Planet. Once back in time, he decides to instead get a job as a radio DJ, playing top 40 hits for the people of Metropolis, uh, eventually striking up a relationship with his secretary, Liza Landis. In an ironic twist of fate, this time travel ends up making his life more difficult as Lois still ends up meeting and becoming obsessed with Superman. Dealing with this and Liza Landis, who is also trying to prove that Clark Kent is Superman, makes Superman choose to return to his original future timeline because dealing with one double L initialed woman is easier than two. Superman is unsure if he made the right decision until Liza comes into the Daily Planet for an interview and Clark discovers that she has gained weight, leading him to think to himself, Great Scott, that was Liza Landis, grown enormously fat through the years. <gasps> Thank goodness I never married her. Whew. Yeah, real classy, Clark. Number four, hypnosis. One of the first questions people ask about Superman when they think they're being smart and original is, oh, how does no one realize that Superman is Clark Kent when all he does is disguise himself with a pair of glasses? When asked this, I usually respond that actually he's not just wearing glasses. He's completely changing his personality and body language. And secondly, barely anyone assumes that Superman has a secret identity. They think he's just always Superman. If that doesn't end the conversation, I usually sigh and bring up the Silver Age explanation. You see, back in the day, Superman had the ability to hypnotize people with his mind, and his glasses, whose lenses were made from the window of the starship he came to Earth in, amplified this ability, hypnotizing everyone into seeing Clark as a different person than Superman. Of course, this doesn't explain why pictures of him don't give him away. Beyond protecting his identity, Superman Superman was also able to use his hypnosis abilities offensively, such as in Action Comics number 555, when the Parasite stole his powers and Superman used his hypnotic lenses to make the villain give them back. Number 3. Tactile Telekinesis Now, this power isn't what you might think. Superman isn't able to move things with his mind, other than in the movie Superman 4, when he used telekinetic vision to rebuild the Great Wall of China, but I am not talking about that. I'm talking about Superman. Superman's ability to telekinetically control any object he touches. Admittedly, that sounds pretty useless and confusing, but it is actually one of Superman's most important powers. Many people assume that when Superman lifts a large object, like say, an airplane, the reason he doesn't punch through the plane is just because comics are silly and not particularly interested in explaining the science of how stuff works. That's where they're wrong, because comics are extremely silly and usually over-explain how stuff works. When Superman grabs a falling plane, he uses his 
tactile telekinesis to form a force field around the plane so that it is able to retain its structural integrity. Number two, shape-shifting. If you still think Clark Kent using glasses to preserve his secret identity is dumb, you're gonna lose it when you find out that he used to have the ability to shape-shift and could have just been doing that instead. Instead of using it to preserve his secret identity, Superman would use this power to impersonate other people, such as in Action Comics number 55, when Superman comes across two men about to wrestle to determine which of them will get to marry a woman named Maisie Day. When Superman finds out that one of the men has been drugged in an attempt to fix the fight, he knocks out the fighter, steals his clothes, changes his face, and wins the fight on his behalf. In an even more extreme example of this power, Superman once used this ability to impersonate an alien, showing that he is not limited to imitating humanoid features. While this is obviously useful, I feel like I have to mention again that it would be even more useful if he used it to create a better disguise for himself than the glasses. Number one, mind control and telepathy. In the same issue where Superman impersonated an alien from another dimension, he also displayed the ability to use telepathic will control to convince an alien to remove their interdimensional travel machine. This begs the question as to why Superman doesn't just say, use this power to make Lex Luthor decide not to be a criminal. Although there haven't been other instances of Superman using full-on mind control, his other telepathic powers have shown up here and there in older Superman comics. But their most surprising use, in my opinion, is to essentially function as caller ID, as demonstrated when Superman stared at a ringing phone and was immediately able to tell that it was Perry White calling. This isn't a problem now, but in a time before caller ID, the ability to screen your calls would be surprisingly useful for anyone, let alone the Man of Steel. At number 10 is the infamous Gold Balls, aka Egg. Mentioned a handful of times already on this channel, Gold Balls is one of the more bizarre mutants to be given as much panel time as he has. Part of the new generation of mutants, Fabio Medina can summon golden balls on command, which don't actually have any destructive or useful properties whatsoever, at least on their own. Although it is soon discovered that when combined with the powers of four other mutants, Gold Balls is able to create a force field of immortality that can resurrect fallen mutants and protect others from death on the island of Krakoa. So there is, after all, a pretty impressive use for Fabio's abilities, but only when paired with the powers of four other mutants. On his own, he just squeezes onto this list. Number 9, Mr. Fantastic. This might be a massive hot take, but hey, you know, I'm going for it. You can come for me in the comments if you want to, that's fine. <laughs> well, I think Mr. Fantastic as a character is pretty cool, and his brilliance definitely cannot be denied. His power set has to be one of the worst amongst the people on his team. Am I right or am I right? I mean, Johnny Storm is the human torch who can fly around and literally engulf himself in flames. How cool is that? Ben Grimm is the thing who is tough and and strong enough to face off against the Hulk, and Susan Storm Richards is Invisible Woman, the real powerhouse of the team who can turn invisible and create force fields big or small enough to defend against or defeat almost any opponent. Now what does Mr. Fantastic have? He can stretch. Really good? It's really more useful in specific circumstances, so that's why he's making my cut. At number 8 is Rainbow Girl. Hailing from the DC Universe, Rainbow Girl has the ability to use the colors of the rainbow to take on any human emotion she desires on command. Red represents anger, blue, hope, and green, willpower. And they all make up a pretty bad superhero, if we're being honest. Online, this character is even viewed as a symbol of an older time when male writers were a lot more simplistic and offensive with their portrayals of female characters. And if these emotion-driven powers based on the colors of the rainbow don't hit that home, her pheromone shield should be a hint that this is true, since that power is used to make her the most popular girl around. Number 7, El Guapo. El Guapo hails from the strange mutant team known as Ecstatics. However, like most who have joined that team, he did not last too long. He died less than 10 issues after his first appearance and introduction. Poor El Guapo. El Guapo is Robbie Rodriguez and his powers allow him to control a skateboard. But not all skateboards, just one skateboard. One that he happens to form a symbiotic connection with. But even that couldn't really save him and he ended up dying, actually impaled by his own skateboard. It's rough sometimes. That's the ecstatics way. At number six is Color Kid. This superhero has powers just as his name suggests and not much more. He has the ability to change the color of anything on command. 
Part of the legion of substitute heroes and the assistant to a scientist on his home planet, Color Kid always seems to be in the shadow of greatness. And unfortunately, his powers don't help this cause very much either. Being able to change the color of anything isn't really such a useful power and often proves to disappoint his teammates, especially in combat situations. Number 5. Penance Penance was once the hero known as Speedball, who is now back to being Speedball again actually, thank goodness. His real name is Robert Baldwin. Baldwin. Baldwin decided to change up his superhero appearance and name following the instigating event that led to the first Civil War. In the comics, this was actually similar to, but different from the MCU and the Sokovia Accords. Similar in the sense that many people did die, many of them in the case of the comics, civilians. Different in the sense that it wasn't a tragedy at a political gathering, but rather happened as a result of the new warriors pursuing supervillains in the interest of their reality TV show. Which you know, would later become political because one of the team members, Nitro, went off and kind of killed a bunch of civilians and the rest of his teammates in the process, with Speedball being one of the few people to actually survive that incident. As a result, it was said that his powers had changed due to his guilt, and they could only be activated when he experienced physical pain. This caused Robert Baldwin to change his name and his appearance being known as Penance, in honor of all the lives lost that he felt responsible for and wearing an Iron Maiden inspired super suit covered in spikes as many spikes I believe as there were casualties, so that he could trigger his powers as needed. At number 4 is the one and only, the infamous Bailey Hoskins with the power to self destruct. This is one of the more tragic superheroes who ends up losing his life after only 4 issues when he finally uses his power. We can assume that this character should land on a list like this every time, considering the comic book series that he's featured in is literally titled X-Men Worst X-Man Ever. But to be fair, this miniseries is known to be a pretty epic read considering the stakes at hand during the run. Bailey has to decide whether or not he's going to use his powers when an evil mutant dictator threatens to take over. Number 3. Super Dupont Super Dupont hails from a French comic strip from the 1970s. Super Dupont was meant to be a hero built on French nationalism, but that also spoofed the ridiculousness of American superhero comics as well as American stereotypes of the French. Super Dupont's power set is like Superman's, but he's not nearly as powerful. He can fly, and he's also a master in the art of savate, a style of fighting known as French boxing. Super Dupont in the series is a mysterious figure who is said to be the son of one of the unknown soldiers buried under the Arc de Triomphe. Although how that soldier then would remain unknown it seems kind of questionable because if he was your father wouldn't you know who he was? So you no longer be an unknown soldier. He fights against the anti-France organization, which is exclusively made up of all foreigners, non-French people. These people speak a fictional language in the comics that is a mishmash of non-French languages, and it's called anti-Francais, which I think is super ridiculous. <laughs> Number two, Metamorpho. Probably one of the strangest but also most powerful heroes out there is Metamorpho. Metamorpho made his first appearance back in 1965 in the Brave and the Bold issue 57, and has also been known as the Element Man in comics. He is a very unique and interesting power set that allows him to transform his body or parts of his body into any element. This also gives him a pretty unique look as well. Metamorpho isn't the only hero to exhibit these powers though. At one point we also had Element Girl, whose story ended up turning quite bleak in the end I must say. She assisted Metamorpho on some of his adventures. And maybe if we do a part two, I will tell you some more about her on that list. Number one, Dupe. By far the strangest, yet kinda in a weird way most OP characters of all time from Marvel has to be Dupe. Okay, so he's at the very least the most strange, even if you don't agree that he's the most OP. And now we have his evil counterpart, Pood in Excellent. Oh boy. Dupe is pretty powerful because he has some fourth wall shattering level of awareness and is able to actually move between panels in comics, existing not just within the pages panels, but also moving into the borders and margins of that page as well, which I think is pretty wild. He's also demonstrated some powerful magical abilities as well as super strength, speed, durability, and even the power to resurrect, without the help of the five no less. Yeah, because Dupe is also like associated with mutants, even though I don't really know if we've clarified if Dupe is actually a mutant, but he's definitely mutant adjacent at least. 
Number 10, Aquaman. Now I'll admit this one kind of started out as a joke, you know, because nobody likes Aquaman. But like, I'm not too far off when I say he's got some useful powers. So Aquaman isn't really all that useless. People only really think that because of the Super Friends cartoon. But if you look pretty much anywhere else, he is pretty badass and is often one of the few things able to defend the world against invasions of demons and such thanks to his trident. This is the reason that he's at the very beginning of this list today. Now that being said though, outside of the water, he is a little bit more vulnerable than he is when he's in the deep, but that doesn't make him any less of a threat for the baddies that he goes up against. Thanks to his Atlantean physiology, he possesses superhuman strength, stamina, and durability, alongside marine telepathy with that allows him to talk and to command sea creatures, and he's also just a ruthless and capable fighter. No matter how much we all make fun of him, he he has some pretty useful powers, so check him out in his first appearance in 1959's Adventure Comics number 260. Number 9, Rainbow Girl. Hailing from the planet Zalnar, Dory Adrison wanted to become a member of the Legion of Superheroes in order to work her way into the acting world. She started that journey after she managed to score a trip to Metropolis by using her powers to win the Ms. Zalnar contest. What powers am I talking about? Well, Dory has the ability to wield the powers of the emotional spectrum. However, she has very little control over it, and this results in some uncontrollable mood swings every now and then. Dory will turn red when she's angry, blue when she's hopeful, and she also has the ability to surround herself in a rainbow-like pheromone field that causes Dory to be found irresistible to pretty much everyone around. She's essentially a human mood ring, if you will. Needless to say, but with these powers, she did not make it onto the Legion of Superheroes roster and instead settled for a spot on the Legion of Substitute Heroes after marrying a wealthy man on Earth. All in all, there are worse powers that you could have. Like, I can see these being useful in some situations, but if given the choice, Rainbow Girl is certainly not the first person I would call if I needed help. Check her out in her first appearance in 1963's Adventure Comics number 309. Number 8, Maggot. As with most mutants, they're either really strong, really weird, or just really lame. Well, Maggot skips the first one altogether and is just really weird and lame. Born in South Africa, this mutant has probably the most unusual digestive system ever as it houses two slugs named Eenie and Meenie who are able to leave his body, eat anything they want, and then crawl back into his guts. Now, as gross as it sounds, this whole process helps him grow in size, stamina, and speed, and also turns his skin blue and his eyes red in the process. Pretty cool, right? Well, yes and no, because the slugs have to enter through his stomach in a very precise manner to be effective. Meaning if they're even just a millimeter off, then nothing happens. Maggot also has psychometric powers, meaning he's able to see things from the recent past or the immediate future. Honestly, these are all very useful and good powers, but with how meticulous and finicky they are, it just makes for a terrible hero. And to top it all off, he is just not written in a way that makes for any satisfying battles. Check him out on his first appearance in 1997's Uncanny X-Men number 345, and let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. Number 7, Mr. Immortal. Craig Hollis, the leader and founder of the Great Lakes Avengers. Now, you can probably guess what his powers are, right? He has the ability to heal and resurrect himself from any injury he faces, no matter how severe it might be, effectively making him immortal. He discovered the skill after several suicide attempts and eventually decided to make the best of it and fling himself into danger without fear because I mean, if you can't die, what is there to really be scared of? The only real problem related to this insanely useful power is that he can still feel pain. And whenever he comes back to life, he goes into these crazy fits of rage because of how much pain he goes through while coming back to life. The only one who could calm him down was Dinosaur, his quote unquote soulmate. However, after her death, there was no one able to really help him. Honestly, that's about it for this character, if I'm being honest. Although he has this amazing power, he is incapable of using it to its full potential because he lacks training. Basically, he is just a walking, talking, raging punching bag that has died a total of 21 plus times. Check him out for yourself, starting with his first appearance in 1989's West Coast Avengers, Volume 2, Number 46. Number 6, Doorman. Another member of the Great Lake Avengers on our list today, Damar Davis, aka Doorman, is a guy who can use his body to make a door. As you know, his name states. Put a little less simply, Doorman is a class 10 teleporter with his body acting as a portal to the Dark Force dimension. And thanks to this connection, he can allow people and items to pass through him and walk through any solid object that he is pressed up against. This was the only power he had for a pretty long time, although he did eventually gain the ability to levitate, which led to flight. But in regards to his main power, it's pretty cool in theory, but it only allows people to go to the room or space directly next to them, which is great, you know, if you're trying to make a quick getaway to confuse someone, but if you need a quick escape to, you know, anywhere else, then I think you're out of luck. Also, in a world of superpowered beings who can literally break down walls, teleport long distances, and even just straight up pick locks, he's not the most useful to have on your team, you know? In short, great power in theory, in practice, eh, not so much. 
Check him out for yourself in his first appearance in 1989's West Coast Avengers Volume 2, number 46. Number 5, Color Kid. Born on the planet Lupra, Ulevac got his powers when he was hit by a beam of colorful light from another dimension while working in a science lab. The accident imbued him with the ability to change the color of any object, no matter how big or small, and then from then on he was known as Color Kid. Needless to say, but his ability was underwhelming to say the least, and he was denied acceptance into DC's Legion of Heroes, and instead was forced to join the Legion of Substitute Heroes, which is essentially the B team, but probably more like the C team for superpowered prime fighters. I will say though, Color Kid did manage to make the most of his pretty useless skills. His color change abilities not only changed the hue of an object, but on at least one occasion, was able to change the chemical makeup of the object, and was able to save Superboy and Supergirl from a deadly kryptonite cloud. Not only that, he figured out how to tweak his abilities to throw off his enemies and to camouflage himself and others around him. Check him out for yourself in 1966's Adventure Comics number 342. Number 4, Cypher. Doug Ramsey was always closely related to Charles Xavier and his school for gifted youngsters from a very young age, as his dad was a lawyer who helped Xavier figure out all the legal aspects of everything. However, he wasn't actually a part of the school despite Xavier believing him to be a mutant. Doug's mutant power gave him the ability to understand and speak any language, human and alien alike, and while that is really impressive and would definitely come in handy, it's not super useful as a superhero, you know? This had the unintended effect of making Cypher a really annoying addition to the X-Men roster. He actually proved to be so annoying that a ton of fans wrote in, begging him to be killed off. Realizing Cypher brought nothing to the table, series writer Louise Simonson complied. But every Marvel fan knows that deaths in comics are never permanent, and he was eventually resurrected, but he still sucked. So much, even though he had new powers including advanced computer skills, and also the ability to sense structural weaknesses in buildings. You know, he honestly just wasn't meant to be a superhero, I think. Take a look at this underwhelming hero story for yourself, starting with 1984's New Mutants, number 13. Number 3, Almighty Dollar. With one of the best names in comic books ever in my opinion, Jay Pennington Pennypacker was just an average certified public accountant before he attended a self-esteem camp known as Camp Run Amuck. Turns out the camp was actually a front for a deranged scientist to use a special device to give people superpowers, and after being given superpowers without their consent, Pennypacker and his friends decided to put their abilities to good use by not only putting a stop to their captors, but also joining the NFL Super Pro's crime fighting unit, earning themselves the name the Happy Campers. What was the power he gained, you ask? Well, Jay Pennington Pennypacker gained the ability to shoot pennies out of his wrists. That's it. The only reason he's high up on this list today is because his power is actually kind of useful, just not in any battle unless it's a contest for who has the most money. Now that I think about it, we don't actually use pennies here in Canada anymore, so it might be pretty useless power in this day and age, but you know, whatever. Check them out for yourself alongside the other happy campers in 1992's NFL Super Pro number 10. Number 2, Friendly Fire. Now not a whole lot is known about Friendly Fire, as we don't know his real name, and his origins are pretty up in the air. With the power to shoot bolts of energy out of his hands, this superhero had the ability to easily be Section 8's strongest team member, but as his name would imply, Friendly Fire could only strike his allies. Sort of. He was a terrible shot, so he constantly hit his friends and not the villains they were facing off against. Once a member of the Hero Team Section 8, which was basically just a big old group of heroes that nobody else wanted to team up with, I mean, come on, their members consisted of a guy who carried around a window to throw at people, and another guy who just welded dead dogs to villains. Friendly Fire really looked like a superstar compared to these guys. His final adventure was probably the worst out of all of them though, because instead of hitting the villain with his powers, he ended up just straight up blowing off his own head. Check out this tragic yet hilarious story for yourself in 1997's Hitman, number 18. And number one, Hindsight Lad. Carlton LaFrage, the all-around nerd misfit who just blackmailed his neighbor Speedball into letting him join the New Warriors, which they begrudgingly allowed. Now calling himself Hindsight Lad, Carlton was best described as the most annoying character on the planet, using the only ability he possessed to help the team. The ability to analyze how things could have gone better after a failed mission. Yep, that's right, Hindsight Lad was that guy. The know-it-all who only tells you what you need to know after it's too late to be of any use. During the Civil War arc, the powerless Hindsight suddenly became bigoted against his former New Warrior teammates, even running an anti-New Warriors website, where he effectively doxed them by revealing their secret identities. Oh, and not to mention he laundered official Avengers funds to buy himself a new costume. I will give him this though, I guess this ability is kind of useful so you know what not to do next time, but 
From experience, I am really not a fan of people like this, so I would hate every second of being on a team with him. Check out probably the most punchable character in all of comic books in his first appearance in 1993's New Warriors Annual number 3. Number 10, Quintavious Quire. Well, you might think Quentin Quire, as he was previously known, aka Kid Omega, has no place on this list because he is so powerful. Lately, he hasn't proved to be as useful in the comics. Rather, in the dawn of X line, it's actually becoming a running gag that he is killed on a regular basis. Often coming in with a pretty decent plan of attack that either he messes up or everything just kind of goes sideways, whether he's appearing in comics like X-Force or Wolverine. However, despite the fact that his death toll continues to climb when it comes to his own death and resurrection count, it should be acknowledged that Quintavious is a master telepath and telekinetic, who is known for being an Omega level mutant, hence his alias as Kid Omega. Number 9, NFL Super Pro. Now anyone else remember when Marvel teamed up with the National Football League to make a promotional series about a pun-loving, crime-fighting ex-football player with superpowers? No? Well that is totally okay, I also forgot about it too. Phil Grayfield, aka Super Pro, had his football career cut short after injuring himself while saving a child and decided to then take up a career as a sports reporter. Grayfield then just so happens to interview an all-ball chemist and super fan who just so happens to have invented a practically indestructible football uniform. Then for some reason a group of thieves comes in, takes what they want, ties Grayfield to a chair and decides to burn up the rest of the scientist's things, including the suit. The combination of the heat and the fumes from the chemist's supplies end up giving Grayfield superpowers, which he then uses to pummel every bad guy in sight. What powers did he gain? Well, just invulnerability. That's about it. Sure, that's great and super useful, but other than that, he's just an average person, so if I were any other hero, I would honestly just leave him on the bench. Number 8, Jubilee. For me, myself, even I originally thought of the 90s cartoon when I thought of Jubilee, that young girl who could shoot fireworks out of her fingers. Sure, it's distracting, but Jubilee was never really as useful in a fight because of her powers. But the reality is, it's not actually Jubilee's powers that made her appear less than useful in the X-Men animated series, which, by the way, has the best intro music of any cartoon ever, save for maybe DuckTales. Rather, it was likely her inexperience that simply held her back. In in the comics, it's been hinted at that Jubilee is actually far more powerful than she sometimes appears. Her powers allow her to create fireworks, but they also give her the potential to detonate matter at a subatomic level, which means she also has the potential to create an explosion similar to the detonation of a hydrogen bomb, or even more powerful, a cataclysmic quark explosion. Number 7, Matter Eater Lab. Now I'm definitely someone who is pretty adventurous with what I eat, but there are some things that I absolutely refuse to eat just because I don't like them. Like, I don't know, pickles. I really am not a fan. But that is where Matter Eater Lad comes in, the superhero who literally ate his way out of all of his problems. Tenzo Kim is an alien from the planet Bismol, and much like Stone Boy, Matter Eater Lad's powers are the result of his planet's inhabitants evolving in response to an unexpected tragedy. When all the food on Bismol became inedible thanks to some pesky microbes, the Bismolians adapted by becoming able to eat and digest anything and everything, which was apparently a good enough power to land him a spot on the League of Substitute Heroes. In addition to being able to put down random objects that he consumes, Matter Eater Lad can also analyze matter's contents, determining if it contains poison, and then he metabolizes his food quickly in order to obtain super speed and use his special bismolene digestive enzymes in order to make tough materials like steel just a lot easier to consume. Honestly, being able to eat anything and everything might make for a great party trick and one that I would love to have in real life, but in the world of comics, it's not necessarily the most useful in the situations that anyone faces. Number 6, Bouncing Boy. Chuck Tane is just what he sounds like, a superhero with the ability to resemble and act like a giant bouncing ball, which his superhero name is an obvious play on. His powers make him not only super bouncy, but also grant him great durability. While many write him off as being a fairly useless hero, and he did fail in his tryouts for the Legion of Superheroes twice, Bouncing Boy did manage to prove how useful his ability could be, especially considering he has worked hard to become a skilled combatant who also has the ability to calculate calculate the correct trajectories for his bounces, allowing him to target specific and sometimes multiple assailants or points of interest. Number 5, Stone Boy. A member of the Legion of Substitute Heroes, a group of C-list, moderately superpowered individuals who got together after being rejected from the Legion of Superheroes. Stone Boy is definitely an open book when it comes to his powers because there's not a whole lot below the surface. I say this because he is a member of the alien race from the planet Zwen, whose inhabitants turn to stone in order to hibernate their way through their six month long winters. On Earth, Stone Boy generally uses his ability in some pretty odd and funny ways. Now originally he was unable to move or stay awake while in his stone state, further proving his, you know, uselessness. 
so his teammates would throw him at enemies, drop him on their heads, or just use him as a distraction. Eventually, thanks to a bit of hypnotherapy, Stoneboy figured out how to remain conscious and even move while using his powers. But nevertheless, his skills are pretty underwhelming in a universe where mobile rock monsters and heroes are pretty much the norm. But I mean, hey, I can't turn to stone, and I'm assuming you can't either, so who are we to judge? Number 4, Infectious Lass. Admittedly, Infectious Lass is not a master of her abilities, but if she were, gee, that would be something. She could quickly become the most useful superhero like that. Drora Sept is an alien from the planet Somatur. Her people have bodies that house tons of microorganisms, which she uses on her enemies, making them sick. Unfortunately, she's not great at controlling her strange power, which sometimes leads to her infecting those that she does not mean to infect. Still, if she had better control, this power is itself seems like it would be quite useful. Number 3, Jin Genie. Becca Parker was a member of Ecstatics, a group of mutant superheroes who were more preoccupied with becoming rich and famous than doing anything altruistic like you know, saving the world. What's her power you ask? Well, she has the ability to generate seismic vibrations, which is pretty cool, right? Well, no, actually, because in order to use her power, she has to be rip roaring drunk. And the more drunk she gets, the more her power could grow. This is a pretty risque and problematic idea for a superhero, as her dependence on alcohol actually landed her on several most offensive lists. Not to mention, it also made her a terrible fighter. When she was drunk, Jin Genie occasionally aimed her seismic waves at her fellow Ecstatics team members, meaning she was often more of a liability than an asset. Thankfully for everyone, but not so thankfully for her, her career as a superhero was cut short when she died while on a mission. Honestly, I'm kinda glad I never learned about her as a kid because the whole, you know, drinking gives you superpowers thing is not a good message to send out to kids. Number 2, Angel. Angel definitely has to be one of the least useful superheroes and mutants. At the end of the day, his main power is flight, which, sure, when the X-Men first came to be was like pretty crazy, and even dare I say, exhilarating. After all, who doesn't want to fly? While flight is by no means a useless power, the problem with Angel these days is it's kinda all he has, that and his hollow bones. Especially considering he is not Archangel currently, so he doesn't have metal wings with poison tipped feathers, nor are his wings sharp enough to be used as blades. So as a mutant in battle, he's in theory pretty useless. But his power of flight is not. I would even argue that Warren Worthington III has a more useful power in his abilities as a businessman, which we'll likely see celebrated even more during the new X Corp comic we're supposed to get sometime in the future. And number one, Razorback. Now I have to say, upon first glance, you would definitely not be able to guess what powers Razorback actually possesses. Think it has something to do with warthogs? Well, you would actually be wrong because its actual power is the mutant ability to drive or pilot any vehicle very well. All of which he, for some reason, names Big Pig. Now it's not really explained how he got his powers or why he wears the warthog headpiece, but hey, I'm not one to judge. I wear high-waisted jeans and overalls, so to each their own. Also, I thought I should mention that the mane of his super stylish headpiece is also electrified, but that limited power is totally cancelled out by the indignity of having to wear an oversized furry helmet that not only limits mobility, but also peripheral vision, which is kind of needed for his whole mutant ability. All I have to say is that when you're in a universe with multiple characters that are capable of destroying literal planets, an expert wheelman really isn't all that helpful. However, in the real world, that is super helpful because I know I've been in cars that I cannot figure out. 